Wings, Wings Beer Sports. Field goal for the win. Oh! I'm here at Dick Sporting Goods to tell you about the biggest concussion baseline testing program ever, and it's called PACE, protecting athletes through concussion education. They asked me to get the word out, so here we go. About 50% of high school athletes have experienced concussion symptoms, and one-third said they had two or more in a single season. Dix is donating $1 towards concussion testing for every pair of athletic shoes purchased from now through September 12th. Now it's time for a one-of-a-kind part. Spend the first college football Saturday of the season with ESPNU. The stage is set for a big year in Tallahassee as Florida State suits up against Louisiana Monroe. Armed with 16 returning starters and a top-notch recruiting class, expectations are high for the Seminoles. And head to the Swamp for Muschamp and Weiss's coaching debut. With a new pro-style offense, the Gators look to make an impression on Florida Atlantic and the rest of the country. Here come the Gators. ESPNU College Football Saturday. The action begins today at noon. This is Dick Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. And welcome to Boston. As the Eagles are getting set to kick off their campaign versus the Northwestern Wildcats. Not everyone in the Boston area is at the Cape this weekend. About 40,000 eventually expected to fill up Alumni Stadium here today for BC and Northwestern. Strong alumni base for Northwestern here in the greater Boston area. They showed up on short notice during basketball season for an NIT game and a lot of purple in the crowd here tonight to cheer on their Wildcats who enter the field for the first time in 2011. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell back here with you and we'll talk Boston College right now and Luke Keekley, you meet him off the field, a very unassuming, kind of a quiet guy. Looks kind of like a young Clark Kent with the glasses and all. But he is quickly becoming the most productive defensive player in the nation. It's really impressive what he's done. Is only a junior. You talked about the split personalities. He said when he gets on the field, he likes to get a little bit nasty. This is a player who has had 22 consecutive games with at least 10 tackles. You'll see him all over the field this afternoon. 183 tackles last year as a sophomore which earned him consensus All-American honors. ACC preseason player of the year, running back Montel Harris for BC, not available for at least this game after he has gone through two knee surgeries over the course of the last nine months. So to fill the void, they turn to the sophomore, Andrew Williams. Andre Williams has played some. He's got some experience last year, even in his only start, went for over 185 yards against Syracuse. I think the bigger question mark is going to be the guys up front. They lost three out of five of their offensive linemen. They're going to have to find somebody for him to run behind. Now, Boston College has sent more than their fair share of offensive linemen to the NFL over the course of the last couple of years. They, it's a concern, but it, you, you get the sense only kind of a minor one. They're like stormtroopers, just kind of keep filling the void. When you've got the nick nickname O-Line U, I think you've got some guys lined up in the stables. Northwestern getting set to take on BC, and the Eagles led for the third consecutive year by their head coach, Frank Spaziani, 16 and 11 as a head coach. 15 years he's been coaching here at Boston College, a defensive coordinator from 99 through 08. We were talking to him yesterday about Northwestern, and with his great accent, he said, the Russ, but they're purple. So great two. personality, both these coaches. Very, real exciting, enthusiastic, fun to talk to. Very similar programs. Pat Fitzgerald, the former All-American linebacker for the Wildcats in his sixth season, seeking his 35th career win. And, you know, it's been tough for Coach Fitzgerald dealing with all the PERSA questions through the course of the offseason. Just talking to him today, you could hear how happy he was to finally just play football. To 
You are watching the ACC on ESPN. Boston College hosting Northwestern. Two seven and six teams from last season and both teams missing some big offensive players. Northwestern will be without all Big Ten quarterback Dan Persa who will take part in the coin toss and very little else. And for Boston College, Montel Harris, the preseason ACC Player of the Year out for this one, maybe out next week as well as they take on UCF. In for Boston College at quarterback, no debating now. It is sophomore Chase Reddick and the Let's staff go! telling us we Let's don't go! want this guy looking over his shoulder. That's not how a quarterback should play. He is our guy. They've put their full confidence in Chase Reddick. He's got a new offensive scheme to work with with new offensive coordinator Kevin Rogers. They're excited about this being the future of this Boston College offense. Offense is the concern here in Chestnut Hill. Defense for years has been carrying this program, but across the board, everybody expects to see an improved, more mature Reddick and entire offensive unit for Boston College. This just the fourth all-time meeting. Northwestern leads the series two to one, and you see the opening storylines right there that we have covered already. It's been a very intriguing start to the college football season. Last night, we were up well past our curfew watching the thriller from Waco as Baylor held on to take care of TCU and a lot of interesting storylines going on across college football today. We'll have updates from the studio throughout the course of this broadcast. Ohio State's in action. So is Missouri and Auburn. Northwestern won the toss. They have deferred and Boston College will receive. Rob, Rob, typically it's the players who can't wait to hit another team, but talking to Pat Fitzgerald, it almost seemed like he wanted to get out and hit somebody in the mouth this morning. No. Old Coach Fitzgerald looks like he's he can, still suited up. He can definitely, he definitely could. Very intense guy, charismatic guy, gets it, intelligent, uh, wonderful guy to spend some time with. Right off the bat, you see an issue with the ball coming down due to the wind, and that was something Coach Fitzgerald talked about, thought it would be a factor in today's game. Steve Flaherty set to tee it up. Taj Kimball, Billy Swigert back for the return. ACC versus Big Ten is underway. Kimball from his end zone will run it out. To the 10, 15, 20. Crosses the 25, and there he is tackled. Sophomore Chase Reddick, just 19 years old, the clear number one quarterback at BC. Six touchdowns, nine interceptions last season. The playbook for him, Danny, has been opened up significantly. Last season, the Eagles 97th in FBS in passing yards, so plenty of room for improvement there. They have to open up the playbook. This team has been one-dimensional on the offensive side of the ball. You cannot let defenses tee off on you like that. It is a methodical offensive approach for Boston College. Reddick under center, and they'll start on the ground. Andre Williams picks one out down the left side, across midfield. Williams with some breakaway speed. He may go the distance and taken down just inside the five. Jordan Mabin coming all the way across the field to make the touchdown saving tackle. And who needs a passing game when you've got runs like that? You've got the ability to get Andre Williams to the outside. They run between the John Wetzel left tackle making his first start. Andre Williams, once he gets to the outside, almost takes it to the house. A touchdown saving by Jordan. Touchdown saving tackle by Jordan Maven. 69-yard scamper for Williams. First and goal for the Eagles. They feed Williams again, not as successful this time. They have lost one. You saw the strength at running back for Boston College. They're actually very high on their receiving core as well, but this is kind of rushing territory here. Second and goal from the five. 
You talked about their receivers. Six foot six, Ifani Moma. It's a great matchup to watch for outside. Pantelli, their tight end, 81, also checks in at six foot six. Look at Moma. Reddick rolls to his right, keeping the play alive. His quarter, or his tight end was tripped up in the end zone, so Reddick does the wise thing and throws it away. Take a look at the backs of the receivers for Boston College. Billy Swigert was the first true freshman at Boston College to record a 1,000-yard receiving, or rather a 100-yard receiving game. Lamont back from knee injury. Eagles have sent plenty of offensive linemen to the NFL lately. This year, they have to replace three starters up there. Redshirt freshman center Andy Gallick may be their next great lineman. Third and goal from the five. Taj Kimball in the backfield with the fullback Dan Williams. Reddick looking left. Guns one short. And this is a huge moral victory should BC choose to go for the field goal as the Northwestern D gave up that huge 69-yard run on the first play from scrimmage, but not letting the Eagles in the end zone. That's got to be a little bit of a letdown for this Boston College offense. Sure, they're probably going to get points on the board, but you really want to be able to punch it in there after the huge run by Andre Williams. 20-yard field goal. Make it 19 yards for Nate Freeze. Three nothing Eagles. So the 69 yard run by Andre Williams is converted into just three points as Pat Fitzgerald talks to his Purple Boys. ESPNU College Football brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Vizio, delivering entertainment freedom for all. You put a lot of effort into creating the perfect evening. So we put a lot of effort into creating the perfect tortilla chip. Introducing new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Made with real ingredients cooked right in, for flavor you can see and taste in every bite. Because when we put in the very best, what you end up with only gets better. Experience new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Here's to the pursuit of better, faster, cleaner, funner. Here's to the pursuit of advancements that help make new engines possible and dreams a reality. Here's to the pursuit of another 100 years of earning America's trust. Not just oil, Pennzoil. Everyday low prices on Pennzoil, available at Walmart. Your car is everything. Your taxi, your moving van, your baby. And for over 30 years, AutoZone has had the parts you can count on to keep it going. But parts are just part of what we do. We're part buddy, part mentor, part of the American way of doing things. So whether you're Mr. DIY or a master mechanic, AutoZone has your back. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Today at 3.30, the stage is set for a big year in Tallahassee as Florida State suits up against Louisiana Monroe. And head to the swamp for Muschamp and Weiss's coaching debut in Florida. ESPNU College Football Saturday. The action begins today at noon. Some of the top moments from last season and 
with Baylor and TCU may have given us some top moments from this season already from last night. We'll take a look at some of the big storylines in the game coming into the season. Oklahoma, number one in the AP poll for the first time since 03. They open up versus Tulsa later today. USC, last preseason AP team to go wire to wire, number one in the SEC as taken the last five national titles. Can they do it again this season? Ryan Quigley sends this one into the air. Northwestern bringing it out across the 20. Hard hit as Benrick Mark met as he crossed the 20. So no Dan Persa today at quarterback for Northwestern. He won't even dress. Instead, it'll be that man. Number two, Kane Coulter, a sophomore from Denver, Colorado. You see his career and last season numbers. He is a very talented rusher, and this is a Northwestern team that will go up-tempo from the get-go. Coulter, the give to Jacob Schmidt. A few yards there will set up second and around seven. Dan Perso wearing the headset today, will not play today again. Ruptured that Achilles tendon November 13th versus Iowa under 10 months ago. To the air, first down for Northwestern as they cross the 35 and Coulter with a nice, somewhat easy throw to help his confidence early on. But you know what, Rob, that's really what this offense is built around. Shorter throws, high percentage completion, just keep those chains moving. Drake Dunsmore with the reception of seven. First and ten. Back to the air. Schmidt with the reception. Gang tackled on the sideline. This team expects to complete over 65% of their passes. If they have anything, anything underneath that, it means they're not having a good day. So far, two for two for Kane Coulter. Second and eight for the Wildcats. Their opening drive of the season. Coulter will shovel, and that one's broken up. Loose ball covered, I believe, by the Wildcats. They're going to call that an incompletion. Max Holloway putting some pressure on Coulter. Trying to run a shovel pass, another easy completion, if you can get it there. It was all jumbled in the middle. Max Holloway almost came down with the interception. Great job of reading that out. Sloppy from the beginning. Third and eight. Good protection. Too strong on the throw by Coulter. Jeremy Ebert, the intended target. So Brandon Williams will come on now to punt for the Wildcats. Billy Swigert, the wide receiver, back to return this punt. Williams into the wind. Swigert will let it bounce. Takes a good BC bounce. Finally, the ball killed at the 20-yard line. A punt of 42 yards. We return, BC, and their offense comes back out onto the field. You wouldn't get on the field without this, and you shouldn't get on the field without a baseline concussion test either. I'm partnering with Dick Sporting Goods to support PACE, the largest baseline concussion testing program ever. Using tools created by Impact and Dr. Joseph Maroon, young athletes will know when to sit out. Buy a pair of athletic shoes at a Dick store or DickSportingGoods.com. For each pair sold, Dick's will donate $1 to Impact to test up to a million student athletes. That's bench concussions with the help of Dick Sporting Goods. One consumer electronics company used to rule the living room. But then something remarkable happened. A company from right here in America rose up, promising a revolution. Now, they're the number one LCD HDTV company with some of the industry's most awarded televisions. It's a new world. Vizio. Entertainment freedom for all.
can make that. For 99 cents? Probably not. Our 99 cent chicken flatbread sandwiches, now in two bowl flavors, only at Taco Bell. Now it's time for a one of a kind part. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell, welcoming you back to the Alumni Stadium locale here, Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, looking at some of the greats who have played here at Boston College, none bigger than Heisman winner Doug Flutie. They were blessed with a wonderful linebacker a couple of years ago, Mark Herzlick, who is with the Giants right now as an undrafted free agent. And here's a tweet he sent out just moments before kickoff. Everybody fired up for the start of college football. Chase Reddick, the sophomore quarterback from California, under center. Fake the give to Williams, goes to his left, completes it. Colin Lamont, the junior from New Jersey, was the Eagles' second leading receiver two years ago. Missed all of last year with a left ACL. He is their big play guy. Was a little rusty in camp, they said. A little tentative, but starting to break off that rust. Colin Larmon just running a 12-yard out route. Chase Reddick hits him perfect timing coming off the play-action pass. Pickup of 11, first down for the Eagles. Reddick goes right. That one low for Larmon. Chase Reddick, he graded himself at a C last season, and there's probably some Boston fans saying that might have been a generous C with what he put up, but you also have to remember it was a very inexperienced wide receiving crew that he had to throw with as well. And, I mean, he was a true freshman. I have tremendous amount of respect for guys who have to start right off the bat. Second and ten. Through the air again goes Reddick. This one more on target. No time to run for Ifani Moma, the senior from Greenlawn, New York. Jordan Maven there to make sure he goes nowhere after the gain of seven. So a nice pick up there will make this a somewhat manageable third and three. Chase Reddick showing off a little bit of his arm strength, ripping it to the outside. Ideally, you want to give your receiver a chance to turn and run with it. At least they got the completion. And right here, looking at third and three, your percentage of, com of converting on this much higher. Two tight ends for BC right now. Pantelli and Anderson, Reddick under pressure, hit as he released that one. Ben Johnson laying the hit on Reddick, and BC will send out their punt unit for the first time. You know what, this, this may have looked ugly, but Chase Reddick recognizes he's got an unblocked defender coming at him. He's hot, he's got to get it out, doesn't take the sack. You know, it didn't look pretty because it was an incomplete. Didn't take the sack for your offensive lineman. Ryan Quigley kicked a school record 79 punts last year for BC. Here's his first of the year. Sends this one to Mark, who's waving off his teammates. Bounces inside the 25, takes a BC roll, and will be downed at the 24, a punt of 38 yards. ESPN News coverage of college football concludes tonight. The Grambling Tigers in the Alcorn State Braves. You can see that one, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, all part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. So Northwestern in their up-tempo offense come back on the field again. Dan Person not suiting up today. The all-Big Ten QB be watching this one from the sidelines as he continues to recover from that Achilles tendon injury. Coulter running it. Coulter across the 30. Wonderful pickup on first down for the sophomore. This is an area where Northwestern felt BC was vulnerable. Moving sideline to sideline, getting Coulter on the edge and forcing the issue, running that zone read, that time keeping it himself. After the pickup of seven, Coulter will go to the air. 
Wide open man and a completion just shy of midfield. Jeremy Eber, very savvy senior from Hilliard, Ohio, with the reception, a gain of 17 yards and first down for Northwestern. Boston College playing a little soft on the outside. Kane Colbert recognizing that, taking advantage of Jeremy Ebert. Wide open on the outside. Shotgun for Coulter. They look to the sideline. Trumpy is the tailback to his right. Fakes the give to Trumpy. Coulter rolling to his right. A little low one, but able to be scooped up by Charles Brown, the senior from Chicago. The guy that Coach Pat Fitzgerald is telling us this week is one of those under-the-radar under, under the radar type guys for us. Quickly, they line up again. Coulter will run this one to the left, take it down at the 35. Steel DeVito, a sophomore from Richfield, Connecticut, and the Sam linebacker with the tackle. And DeVito trots off right now. Coulter runs to his right, keeps it, and that'll be enough for a first down. Pickup of six. Coulter, we talked to the open about him having played some at the running back position last year when he played at over 105 yards rushing. Boston College is going to have to make an adjustment to account for his running ability. And they read that one very well as Coulter suffocated at the 30. Luke Keekley there. A couple tackles already for him. Nick Clancy, the junior backup Sam linebacker there as well. And that's really what you have to do to stop this option, you know, read option that Coulter is running. You make him run sideways. Don't let him cut up the field. Make him make that decision. Seventh play of the drive coming up here. Jacob Schmidt behind Coulter. The clean give to Schmidt. Goes left, try to go north, pick up at four. So third and seven upcoming for Northwestern in one of those territories where it could be four down territory. It could be, and I, I think Boston College really has got to think about bringing some pressure here to force the issue and to try to knock Northwestern out of field goal range. Third and seven for the Wildcats from the 26. Coulter trying to elude the pressure, lost one up, a dangerous ball, incomplete. Let's see what Pat Fitzgerald sends out, and it looks like it will be the field goal unit. Boston College tried to disguise zone, did shift up, brought an extra rusher, five guys are coming, Coulter's forced into throwing the ball out of there, but did a good job. We talked about the field goal range being right here. He got rid of it, same spot. The sophomore Jeff Budzine on for a 43-yard field goal attempt into a little bit of a wind. And right down the middle, we are tied up at threes. Pat Fitzgerald learned a little trick from his old head coach, pulling a couple fast ones on his players through the course of the season. We'll show you what he and his coaching staff surprise the players with when we return. ESPNU College Football Saturday. The action begins today at noon. weekend on an endless buffet with a juicy steak only golden corral would include steak for breakfast it's on our endless weekend breakfast buffet still for one low price and join us monday september 5th for labor day breakfast Producers of 30 for 30, this revealing and heartfelt documentary explores how one man survived. He would not be denied. Overcame and triumphed. He's running over people! 
Herschel's the greatest that's ever met. SEC Storied, an all-new four-part series on ESPNU. Herschel debuts Wednesday at 8. Feeling buried by all the piles of paper in your home or office? Maybe it's time you traded in the old filing cabinet for a new office assistant. Meet the Neat Desk Scanner and Organizer, the only scanner that actually thinks while it scans. With Neat Desk, all your important documents can be easily scanned and then organized with the NeatWorks software. So that shoebox full of receipts instantly becomes a manageable expense report. That stack of business cards can go directly into your computer's contact list. Virtually any piece of paper automatically becomes a searchable document that you can find with a simple keyword. And here's the best part. If you call or visit us at tryneat.com right now, you can try the Neat Desk or the amazing Neat Portable Scanner for 30 days absolutely free. In fact, we'll even pay for the return postage if you decide to send it back. That's how confident we are that you'll love your Neat Organizer. So give us a call or go to tryneat.com for your 30-day trial and say goodbye to all that paper. Pat Fitzgerald's late head coach, Randy Walker, liked to provide what he called distractions through the course of camp when Fitzgerald was a player. So he's carrying that on as a head coach. This was the scene at their fall camp up in Wisconsin, a pre-planned water balloon attack by the staff on the players. Over 600 water balloons were crafted. It was Coach Fitzgerald's idea and let the games begin, breaking out the balloons. They even had some of those super soakers out, catching the players off guard. And uh, one of the many things you have to love about Coach Fitzgerald and this program, Danny. Uh, if you've played football at any level and you've had to go through two-a-days, you know how tough it is mentally, the monotony of just having practice after practice. And he wants to loosen it up a little bit Give these guys a mental breather. Coach Bob never do something like that with you guys? You know, Mike Shanahan in the NFL, actually, we were getting ready for this tough practice, and he pulled up a bus, and we all went bowling. Nice. So we should have had you out there commentating. Did us. you drop a ham bone? <laughs> I did not. Better luck next week. Kimbo will take this one in the end zone, and Swagger tells him to take a knee, so BC will start from the 20. Their third offensive series of the season about to take place. What have you seen early on from Chase Reddick, their sophomore quarterback? Uh, I think you've seen him make some good decisions. I think that's the most important thing they want to do. Last year, he had six touchdowns, nine interceptions. He's got to be smarter with the football. Right now, they haven't asked him to do a lot down the field yet, but I think you'll start seeing them take some shots the more they establish the running game. Played significantly under Frank Spaziani last season as a true freshman is still just 19 years old. Andre Williams, who had that huge 69-yard run the first time he touched the game, or touched the ball this game, the longest of his career, picks up one right there. So second and long for the Eagles. Bryce McNall, the Will linebacker, there with the tackle. McNall, last couple of years, dealing with some injuries. Had a great start last season, and then everything had to get ratcheted back because of those injuries. The staff very high on that senior from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. This is something here you didn't see a lot last year. Shotgun formation. Reddick sneaks one into MoMA, and they'll call it an incompletion. Ben Johnson, the senior linebacker. Try to make sure it's not a completion. Johnson has played all over for Northwest. One of the fastest guys on their defensive unit. Chase Reddick trying to squeeze it into a tight window. Good ball placement, but also good defense there by Northwestern. Northwestern's a defense that really didn't know what to expect going against the new offensive coordinator, Kevin Rogers. Talking about having to make adjustments all throughout the first quarter. Not a lot has changed with Boston College. They're still big up front and want to run the ball. Third and nine, though, it's pass time. Reddick, the righty, cuts through the pocket, creates, finds his tight end for a first down, almost to the 40 is Chris Pantelli, a junior from Wayne, New Jersey, big target Pantelli, 6'6", 251, quiet kid, but as the staff was telling us, a legit D1 tight end guy. I think this is where Chase Reddick shows his maturity as a quarterback. He's got pressure, he's got a scramble. Instead of panicking, keeps his eyes down the field and converts the third down. That's a very mature move for the young quarterback. Pickup of 18 
First and ten now for the Eagles. Play action. Reddick rolling to his left, stops, going long, and has a man, Moma. The big reception inside the 30. Maybe not the prettiest of strikes, but it was effective. And we just talked about the fact the play action pass. They worked it on first down, and they were able to take a shot down the field. When you've got a receiver that's six feet six tall, you can take a shot down the field and trust him to get it. The only guy who almost made, almost made the play on that was Abraham Campbell, who was actually the opposite field corner. Big pass play covers 36 yards. Williams again finding success down the left side. Jerevin Matthews, the senior from Cannonsburg, PA, with the tackle that may have saved a touchdown, a gain of 13, and another first down for the Eagles. We welcome you to Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. We are on the campus of Boston College, a ACC Big Ten showdown here. BC hosting Northwestern. Bob Stone, Danny Cannell, glad you're making us part of your Labor Day weekend festivities. First and ten. Williams tries to spin out a one tackle. And taken down by a swarm of Wildcats. Brian Peters there, as was David Wabusi. Dan Persa, last year, the all Big Ten quarterback, not playing today. He's about 10 months into his rehab from that Achilles tendon surgery. They say it usually takes 12 to 14 months for you to be at full speed. He is well ahead of schedule. We may see him next week. Taj Kimball, the play action to him across the middle, incomplete. Momo, the intended target, and again, Brian Peters there to break it up. Peters, all Big Ten, second team last year at the strong safety. Once again, something BC didn't do a lot last year in the shotgun on an early down. Show a little play action from that position. Suck up the linebackers and try to go over the top. Would have been a great catch by Fani Moma. Chase Reddick giving him a chance. That's all you can ask for. Third and 11. If you're Pat Fitzgerald, what do you send out defensively, Danny? Well, I think this is another situation where you try to pressure Chase Reddick into showing, throwing something underneath where he can't convert the third and 11. Now, BC staff not Come happy on. at all as they're forced Boston to burn College. a timeout. They're first. So Frank Spaziani and his troops will talk this one over. 3-3 three, three here. Four and change left in the opening quarter. Take a look at our Twitter question of the day. Who are the front runners for the Heisman Trophy this season? Robert Wilson. Robert Griffin the third RG three sounds like something from Star Wars those two guys suddenly a factor <laughs> here in week one in the Heisman I have conversation. a feeling a lot of people are gonna be jumping on that RG three bandwagon but there are a lot of games left to play but man he was impressive last night Russell Wilson in his debut for Wisconsin also impressive but man I don't think I've seen a better performance last night than Robert Griffin the third it's like the holiday shopping season it seems to get here earlier and earlier and <laughs> earlier each year we go in right now and i guarantee you there'll be some halloween stuff out there for sale I'm like come on it's labor day and yes we are already in the heart of the heisman conversation third and 11 for boston college right now reddick with his eye to the left, and he goes that way. Has a man wide open, diving catch in and out of the hands of MoMA. And Nate Freeze will come on for his second field goal attempt. Pat Fitzgerald has seen his D give up some big plays, but once BC is in the red zone, the Northwestern D locks down. Thirty-one yard effort for Freeze converted earlier from 19. And he misses this one.
No. A couple defensive moral victories for Pat Fitzgerald and his men. I think he's got to feel good about where they are right now after giving up the big run in the first drive to Andre Williams. They buckled down, didn't let him in for a touchdown, settled for a field goal, and then that time, another defensive stop forced the missed field goal. So the high tempo Northwestern D, Northwestern offense comes back on. Again, no Dan Persa. Kane Coulter running it to his right. Leaps over defender, picks up. We'll give him three. So second and seven. This Northwestern offense wants to keep a lot of tempo, attack those defensive linemen. Number 96, Caleb Ramsey, they've really felt like they could wear him down throughout the afternoon. Trivon Green with the tackle. Northwestern going awfully deep on their running back depth chart right now. That's something they typically do. They'll shuttle in a lot of guys to keep them fresh, both at the running back position and the wide receiver position. Third and four. Coulter avoids one pressure. He'll do it with his feet. He'll pick up a first down. Now, you always knew that Kane Coulter could run the ball, and he is certainly displaying that today, but it's his arm strength which has improved that has the Northwestern staff really excited. But when you've got feet like this, Good things usually happen. This is a quarterback who put on 10 pounds of muscle throughout the season. Picked up a great block there by number eight, Demetrius Fields. A pistol formation here. And the give and the sweep out wide right by Mike Trumpy. Nothing doing there. Luke Keekley, as he so often is, on the scene with a tackle. Ten or more tackles in... 22 consecutive games coming into this one. Longest active streak at FBS. Coulter dumps one down, complete to Rashad Lawrence. That'll be shy of a first down. Lawrence, the sophomore from Orlando. Kane Coulter making a good decision there, pressuring the line of scrimmage. Actually thought about throwing it early, wasn't there. Kept his patience, came open late and hit him when he needed to. Five wideouts, three to the left of Coulter. Nice protection. Coulter will run for it. He'll have a first down. Gets a big block. Still on his feet. And out of bounds at the 36. A gain of 26 yards for Coulter. Such a luxury for an offense to have a quarterback who can make plays with his feet. But watch the block by number 11, Jeremy Ebert, coming into your screen. Cutting back, huge blow to BC defender. And that is a wide receiver on a linebacker, Nick Clancy. Jeremy Ebert laying the block. Six rushes for 45 yards already for Coulter. Adonis Smith to the left of Coulter. Take the give. Wonderful protection. Wide open. Lawrence. Well, mark him out just shy of the 19. Rashad Lawrence with another grab here on this drive. This is several times Northwestern has worked that side of the field. Boston College is playing a true freshman defensive back, and they have taken advantage of his soft coverage. Smith, the carry here, crosses the 15, is struck in the back. Boy, things move quickly. Nick Clancy there with the tackle. Northwestern offensively runs at three speeds. Fast, faster, fastest. And this is when it's probably to your biggest advantage. You've had a long drive. The defense really starts to wear down. Adonis Smith stays in at tailback. Coulter will pitch it to him. Here's Smith across the 15. 10, 5, touchdown, Northwestern. Flag on the play. And this might be coming back. Very 
the run. Holding, number 17, offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. First flag of the game is a big one on Northwestern. Lawrence flag for it. Rashad Lawrence trying to get a block down the field, getting a little bit too much jersey. A little face mask, too. A great look at it. Officials all over it. Man, that was a great two play, too, for Kane. Coulter took a, a shot right when he pitched it. And typically, when you run that option, if you do get lit up, usually it works pretty well once you pitch it. Second and short for Coulter and company. Time winding now in the first quarter. Adonis Smith trying to shake off a couple tacklers. May be able to lean forward for a yard. This will bring up third and short. BC came up with a big stop earlier. Northwestern countered. See if BC, it's back in their court for Coach Spaziani's defense. Mike Trumpy, the tailback, fullback. Is Tyrus Jones. The give, and I don't think he got it. It's going to be close. Keekley there for the tackle as we conclude the first quarter. Coach Fitzgerald waiting with us. Gonna have a little decision to make. Very short, just a couple inches shy of a first down, but he'll have time to think about it as that concludes the first quarter. The explosive play of this first quarter was the first play from scrimmage. Andre Williams busting out a 69-yard run. The Palmer and Pollock Show, Monday on ESPNU. Hey, Wendy, me and the boys, we like our chicken with a little heat. Well, let's answer that call with a truckload of spicy chicken for the Branch Street Firehouse. We only use tender, whole breast fillets, kicked up with our blend of peppers and spices. That's a great sandwich. Got some zing to it, huh? Our spicy chicken is the perfect balance between flavor and heat. Got a good kick, huh? Mm, you need a good kick. <laughs> Try one today, because like these guys, you know when it's real. I fight it tested, I fight it approved. I agree. At Cheez-It, we expect a lot from our cheese. Hmm. What are you doing? Studying. Studying? Quantum physics. That's not mine. I don't know where that came from. Oh, uh, do you... Is that a check? That's not a good check, is it? What do you think? It's a bad check. We take the time for our cheese to mature before we bake it into every delicious cracker. Because at Cheez-It, real cheese matters. We're CenturyLink, a new kind of broadband company committed to providing honest, personal service from real people. Five-year price lock guarantees, consistently fast speeds, and more ways to customize your technology. Would you like her to rephrase the question? going to be the person I'm expected to be anymore. Be unexpected. Bleu de Chanel. At Chanel.com. Your car is everything. Your taxi, your moving van, your baby. And for over 30 years, AutoZone has had the parts you can count on to keep it going. But parts are just part of what we do. We're part buddy, part mentor, part of the American way of doing things. So whether you're Mr. DIY or a master mechanic, AutoZone has your back. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone. AutoZone. 
Anish Roth with his in-game update. Defending national champion Auburn in a world of trouble early. Down 7-0 to Utah State. Barrett Trotter finds Emery Blake. 56 yards to the house. That tied the game at 7 for Trotter. His first career touchdown pass. He's replacing Cam Newton. But Utah State coming back. The Aggies' Chucky Keaton, the quarterback keeper on fourth down. Utah State up 14-7. Rob, back to you. Uh, Utah State hasn't had a winning season since 1996. They were just 4-8 and eight last year, and they were unbeaten last year. Go back to the season prior, they're in the midst of a 15-game winning streak. Interesting news coming out early here in the opening weekend of college football. Fourth and one, and Northwestern has decided to go for it. Schmidt, the running back. QB keeper, it did not look good from here. And a big stand for the BCD. Rob, it's the simplest play in all of football. It's the center quarterback exchange. But when you don't get it in a situation like that, it doesn't come up clean, it can cost you big. Kane Coulter, the ball just kind of dropped down, threw his momentum off, and BC came up ready to stop him. Do you like the call going for it on fourth? I do. In that situation, I mean, they had it right there. These are two big physical teams. You figure you can get a half yard with your big offensive lineman. If they got the snap cleanly, I think he would have had a chance to get it. So that was their 12th play of the drive. They had gone 70 yards where they come up empty-handed. Reddick back on the field to lead the Eagles. Two wideouts to his right. Andre Williams behind him. Williams will run. And again, they go to that left side where they've had a lot of success, a pickup of one. So second and nine after Tyler Scott dragged down Williams. Take a look at our numbers that have been generated through the first quarter. Total yards fairly even. Score even. Three more first downs for the Wildcats. Second and long for the Eagles. Reddick rolling right. Quick, easy strike. Alex Amidon with the reception. And that'll bring up a third and three. Pickup of six yards there. I like what Kevin Rogers, the offensive coordinator for BC, has done there. Mixing things up, running a little shotgun on second down, getting Chase Reddick outside of the pocket, working their play action off their strong running game. Critical third down for him here, though. Third down and three. They go to Williams, and Williams jumps over defender and gets the first down. We saw Auburn in trouble a while ago. How's Alabama doing? Well, Rob, you asked. Alabama off to a good start against Kent State. That's Nick Saban's alma mater, by the way. A.J. McCarron with his team up 7-0 to Marquise Mays. 24 yards for the strike. McCarron off to a good start. 5 of 6, 98 yards. And you can see that one on ESPN3. Williams goes to the right. Little spin there shy of the 30 on that first down carry. Alabama off to a strong start. A lot of people have them picked to go to the national title game, continue the SEC's dominance. Love Trent Richardson, what he brings to the table. I think they got to figure out who their quarterback is and stick with him instead of rotating two QBs, though. Pick up a four, bring up second and six. Make it second and five. Redding under center. Zips one wide left. Complete to Amidon again, and he's got a first down. Amidon was second on the team in receiving yards last season with 338. Probably the team's fastest guy. But Last year's offensive coordinator, Gary Tranquil, had an interesting term for Alex.
called him a fart in a frying pan. Did you read that one? I did see that I one. I had to laugh. I, I didn't said, know if I'm you getting were going to read it, Yeah, I know. <laughs> you had kind, to. Kind of a, a whirling, clueless dervish out there at wide receiver, but whatever he did, he did fast. Pitch to Kimball. And Kimball at midfield. And we talked about that kind of whirling dervish receiver attitude. Another thing that didn't help Chase Reddick as a true freshman coming on with his development, his confidence, and his pass efficiency. They didn't have a playmaker for him on the outside, and I think that's where they're counting on guys like Karin Larmon and Ifani Moma and Alex Amadon, those type of guys. They've got to step up and make plays. Ifani Moma made one earlier. They need to make more. Second and short from just beyond midfield. Taj Kimball met short of the first down marker. Gain of maybe two, so we'll bring up a short third down situation for the Eagles. You know, Rob, this is ACC versus Big Ten, but if you ask both coaches, I think both these teams kind of look like Big Ten teams. Talking to Pat Fitzgerald, he said, looking at BC, they remind you of a Wisconsin or a Iowa, big boys up front, and sure enough, that's what we've seen, a very physical contest so far. Uh, Fitzgerald said it's like adding an extra Big Ten game to our schedule. A little NFC North battle, maybe? Full start, offense, number 75, five-yard penalty, the down remains second. First penalty of the afternoon on Boston College. Nathan Richmond, the senior captain for this team, has been struggling with a back injury throughout camp, hasn't played much in practice. Now I would guess they were gonna run the way those guys were coming off the ball on that false start. So third and six now, that will change the play calling a little bit. Williams the tailback to the right of Reddick. Man in motion is Larmon. And he's looking at Larmon. Finds him across the 45. First down, BC. Jordan Maben there to push him out of bounds. Gain of 11 on the play. This is one thing Kevin Rogers does to assist Chase Reddick. By the motion across the field, you could tell it was man coverage. Chase Reddick then knows where to go with the football, finding Larmon in the flat with a defender playing way off of giving a lot of way, a leeway to make that completion. Ninth play of the drive coming up here for the Eagles. Great, great part of the field to take a shot. Play action. They're looking deep, and that one is going to be picked off. Jordan Maben, the senior from Northfield, Ohio, with his first interception of the season and the second of his career. And here's an example of Chase Reddick. You know, earlier we talked about making a mature decision. This time, you take the shot off play action, give him a post with a wheel rod on the outside. You just got to come off of it. Defensive back is sitting out there reading your eyes the whole way. There's your wheel route by number 80, 83, Alex Amadon. Reddick knew instantly when he threw it. And that's when you got to have a trust issue with your coordinator that if you call those shots, you don't necessarily have to throw them. To give to Mike Trumpy. Luke Keekley with the tackle. Keekley, the 11th consensus All-American in Boston College football history, runner-up for both the Butkus and the Nagurski Award last season as a preseason All-American, third in the ACC preseason player of the year bout. Coulter with time, throws that one away. Good so decision. third and six now for the Wildcats. Good decision by Coulter. The play was kind of broken down, turned into a playground type route, trying to find guys open down the field, but wisely just threw it out of bounds. Coulter in the shotgun, five wide outs, three to his right. This is where Coulter can hurt you with his legs if it's not there outside. There's a lot of room in the middle of the field for him to run. He's done it plenty of times already this afternoon. Coulter. Picked off by Keekley, and Keekley may take it into the house. Cuts right, 
stiff arm and just short of the goal line. His fifth career interception and almost his second career touchdown. Luke Keekley being in the right place at the right time. In coverage on Jeremy Ebert, the ball thrown behind him right at Luke Keekley was kind of shocked when he had the opportunity for the pass, getting a little help from a couple guys trying to get him in the end zone, almost finds it. Seven tackles, one interception, and an almost touchdown for Keekley. First and goal to go. Williams. The carry. Williams met at the one and then pushed back to the two. This Northwestern D has been very tough when they're backed up against their goal line today. And Boston College has struggled to find the end zone and get the touchdown once they've been down in the red zone. So this is an opportunity for them to get a touchdown on the board. They really need to get six points here. Great down for a play action pass, but do they trust Chase Reddick enough to let him take that shot? Ball start, offense, number 77, five yards. The down remains second. Junior Emmett Cleary with the fall start. How much does that penalty and oh. pushback change your play call? Oh, it absolutely kills you. Before you can pound it in, you, you, the defense is probably thinking you're going to run it so you can run play action. The only thing I liked as a quarterback, you got more room to work with here. The lanes are a little bit bigger. Momo to his right, Williams behind Reddick. Williams to the left, Williams to the five, Williams, touchdown, BC! Rob, the other thing it allows you to do when you get that penalty, you're out in the six-yard line, you can open up the formation a little bit, and that's what BC did, and that really allowed Andre Williams to get to that corner showcase his speed when it became a race to the pylon. Williams already over 100 yards has the first touchdown of the season for BC and they are on top now 10-3. But it was all made possible by the All-American Luke Keekley with the interception and the return to set up the Eagles first touchdown of 2011. sucks not end of a long day tired but middle of the day places to go things to do deadlines to meet but all i want to do is close my eyes tired five hour energy fixes tired fast one shot back to work problem solved five hour energy fix the tire running backs don't stand in line we run through them especially when nike pro combat hyper strong Nike Pro Combat. I forgot my wallet, Steven Jackson. Take every advantage. Nike Pro Combat Hyper Strong at Dick's Sporting Goods. Better athlete, better team. I'm a raccoon. And this time in your attic has been the best week of my raccoon life. I'm digging. I'm nesting in this fluffy stuff. I've already had like four babies. I'm the smartest raccoon I know. And if you got your home insurance where you got your 15-minute car insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. <laughs> so get Allstate. You could save money and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem, like Allstate agents. It's not just where you are, but where you want to be. And with smooth drinking bush beer, the mountains are closer than you think. Coming back.
Isn't it time to head for the mountains? Pan-seared seafood cooking stations are open and the reviews are in. My chef pan-seared my scouts right before my eyes. It was fresh, it was tasty, it was hot. It's all part of our endless dinner buffet for one incredibly low price. Only at Golden Corral. Luke Keekley, the player the coaches talked about him, said he had a nose for the football, being in the right place at the right time. Here he is on a third down and five situation. Receiver's going to run at him. Keekley's playing zone coverage. Looking at the quarterback the whole time, takes the guy who comes in his zone, actually gets beat a little bit to the inside, but the poor throw behind the receiver is a welcome Christmas gift for Luke Keekley. Takes it to the house, and if he didn't have Northwestern center Brandon Vitobla hanging on him, he might have taken it in. Gerald Lavonno set to kick it off. Mark and Schmidt back for Northwestern. A low line drive goes out of the end zone. That one got there in a hurry. Your early take on what Kane Coulter has done in place of Dan Purse at quarterback for Northwestern. I mean, they've moved the ball decent. Now uh, They've had a couple times on third downs where they couldn't convert. And then, of course, there he'd love to have that pass back. He's impressed me with his legs, his ability to get first downs on the ground. Uh, their tempo is there. He just They just need to finish drives. They haven't been able to sustain drives. He has been very effective using his feet. There's his passing numbers. 45 yards from the ground, so 107 total yards. Trumpy gets it. Finds four yards down the left side, bringing up second and six. Kevin Pierre Lewis, the will linebacker with the tackle. He doesn't get a lot of pub because the guy next to him, Luke Keekley, steals all the attention, but Pierre Lewis a freshman All-American last year. Through the air. Short pickup. The completion to Charles Brown. Now they're going to call it an incompletion now. So third and sixth upcoming here for Coulter and the Wildcats. Play broken up by Al Lewis Jean. A guy they were picking on before because he's a true freshman. But Lewis Jean looks a little more comfortable, getting a little more aggressive out there on the corner position. Gene originally committed to Miami. He was a huge signing for Boston College. They're showing a little pressure here on Coulter. They back off. Coulter may go down, and he does. First sack of the game. Steal DeVito. How do you not like that name for a linebacker with the sack? Steal DeVito right at the bottom of your screen. Going against the right tackle, just sheer power. Getting after the quarterback. Just absolutely ran over Patrick Ward. Swiger backtracking. Goes forward from his 20 and is met at the 25. And that's where BC will start. The offense after that 59-yard punt. When we return, the studio will take it over, and then we'll see BC on offense again. Team is not something you do alone. Team is plural. Team is arms, legs, blood, sweat, and soul. A lot goes into team. But what we take away stays with us forever. You put a lot of effort into creating the perfect evening. So we put a lot of effort into creating the perfect tortilla chip. Introducing new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Made with real ingredients cooked right in, a flavor you can see and taste in every bite. Because when we put in the very best, what you end up with only gets better. Experience new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Here's to the pursuit 
of better, faster, cleaner, funner. Here's to the pursuit of advancements that help make new engines possible and dreams a reality. Here's to the pursuit of another 100 years of earning America's trust. Not just oil, Pennzoil. Everyday low prices on Pennzoil, available at Walmart. For 99 cents? Probably not. Our 99 cent chicken flatbread sandwiches, now in two bold flavors, only at Taco Bell. ESPNU College Football, brought to you by Russell Athletic, who remind you that together we are. Students just making their way back to campus here in Chestnut Hill. Classes begin early next week. After the Labor Day weekend concludes, and what a weekend of college football it is around the country. Coming up, we'll have another update from your defending BCS champs. Auburn in trouble versus Utah State, but we are here live on the campus of Boston College. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell. After a Northwestern punt, BC will take over. Very balanced attack thus far. 109 yards on the ground, 108 through the air. They go to the ground. Williams. Shy of the 30, and we send it to the studio. Anish, what's going on with Auburn now? Auburn and Utah State. This is getting a little dicey for the defending champs. Fourth down conversion. Chucky Keaton's and Taryn Lloyd. Utah State would punch it in six plays later to go up 21-7. Ensuing kickoff, though, Trey Mason. 97 yards to the house. The Tigers back with it a score down 21-14. About five and a half until halftime. Interesting. 10-3 here in Boston. ACC on top of Big Ten. Quick outlet and a catch and a spin by Moma. Across the 40, bumped out of bounds at the 42. A gain of 14 yards. It's really something BC has been able to take advantage of. Are the corners playing a little soft on the outside? Actually, both teams' defenses playing a little soft, a little conservative. First game of the year. Don't want to give up the big play. Redick. Scrambles to buy more time. Finds it. And now he's going to be sacked. Jack DiNardo. Staying with the play and dropping the quarterback. And DiNardo a little slow to hop up here. Luke, Luke Keekley, Boy wonder, they like to call him. Came up with a gift interception earlier. Followed up by an Andre, Andre Williams score the only touchdown of the game to this point. Jack DiNardo being helped off the field. 295 pounds senior from Hinsdale, Illinois. 39 career tackles coming into the season. He's a guy who's been nicked up a lot for him. The coaches talked about him being their stud on the defensive side of the ball. Hopefully they'll get him on, back on the field soon. Second and 15. Three wide outs, two to the left. Want to be smart with the ball. You don't have to get it all here. Get yourself back in a third down and manageable. Kimball the tailback. Reddick just barely crossing the 40, a gain of three, but this will be third and long for BC. It's a case where Northwestern's defense showing blitz. All these linebackers look like they're coming, but nope, they drop out. Caught Chase Reddick a bit off guard. Thought he was going to have a quick throw available, then kind of lost sight of where he was, and 
Northwestern able to capitalize and get the sack. Bruce McNall has been very active from that will linebacker spot. Third and 12. Reddick takes the short drop to Williams. See if he can generate some yards with his feet. Not much. And that'll be a three and out for BC. Gain of seven, and the punt team comes on. Kevin Watt, the senior, first on the scene with the tackle for Northwestern. Third down and 12, BC calling a screen. A little bit conservative, but I think both teams realizing that this could be a field position type game. BC and Gerald Lovano will be punting into a slight breeze. Fenrick Mark back at his 10. Nice hang time on this one. May go into the end zone, and it does. A little too much juice on that one. So Northwestern, after the 52-yard punt, will bring it out and start at the 20. Kane Coulter trying to generate a touchdown for the guys in purple. He takes the field when we return. ESPNU College Football Saturday. The action begins today at noon. Seafood cooking station is now open. Chefs are standing by. It's delicious shrimp made to order. It's tilapia seared to perfection right before your eyes. It's all part of our endless dinner buffet, still for around 10 bucks only at Golden Corral. be the last to know get it faster with 4g it's the network of possibilities at&t are you ready for this summer's new look the buzz is sexy skin and you can have it too the secret is the deep cleansing wash from proactive it keeps your chest back and shoulders clear and it's yours free with this special summertime offer i get breakouts on my back it's like oh you know i gotta hide this and so now it's really good to have a product like the proactive body wash that works so quickly Acne is out and clear, sexy skin is in. So order the number one acne system for only $19.95. And the deep cleansing wash is free. And to celebrate the season, we're offering free shipping. I recommend it to almost all my clients because it clears up their chest and their back and they can wear a little strapless dress and feel really pretty. Get in on Proactive's hot summer deal right now. You get the deep cleansing wash and these extras free. A $72 value for just $19.95. And today, your shipping is free. With Proactive, this is the best my skin has ever been. And that feels great. Call 1-800-676-6359. <sighs> Rob Stone, Danny Cannell. Happy Labor Day to all of you out there enjoying the last bits of summer. Wildcats have not been overly impressive on their last three offensive drives. Punt, interception, and out on downs, although it was a 77-yard drive. Just a field goal to show for their offensive efforts. Again, Dan Persa not available today as he continues to recover from that ruptured Achilles tendon. Kane Coulter, the quarterback. Coulter will keep it himself across the 25 and then upended at the 26, a gain of 27. Al Lewis Jean with the tackle. There's Persa on the sideline. To the air, wide open, Fields. To the 40, first down and then some. Out of bounds, just shy of the 45. DeVito with the tackle. You know, this this is where Coulter's got to step up. What I think they're missing the most right now out of Persa is leadership. This is a team where the team needs to come together and regroup. Coulter making a good decision there, though, finding the soft corner. Gain of 18. 
Another wide open receiver. This time it's Jones. And another first down, Christian Jones, the true freshman from Houston, Texas, seeing his first collegiate playing time, a gain of 12. This Northwestern offense finally starting to find a little rhythm to it. When you run this no huddle, it's all about finding your timing. Five wideouts for Coulter. Looks right, goes right, complete Ebert. And Ebert finally dragged down. Lewis Jean able to hold on to his ankle to make the tackle. So second and four. And quickly they snap it to the ground. Adonis Smith to the 30, another first down. BC's got to regroup right here. You know, in basketball, when a coach will call a timeout because things aren't going your way, I don't know if they have that luxury, but defense is struggling getting the play call in. They're looking around. Coach Spaziani's frustrated, and Northwestern is keeping the heat on them. Chain game struggling on this drive as Northwestern is just moving down the field. 11 first downs now for the Wildcats. Trumpy the tailback to the left of Coulter. Swing it wide left. Brown, the reception. And bumped out of bounds at the 15. And the chains move again, a gain of 14. When you get these bubble screens, you got to get great blocking on the outside from your receivers. Two Northwestern receivers out in front, leading the way for Charles Brown. Schmidt, make that trumpy. And another productive play on first down. In this situation, if you're BC, I do think you'd think about taking a timeout. Not only do you get your defense a chance to regroup, but you want your offense to get a chance. They go back to Trumpy. Dances for a few, but dances for another first down. As we approach one minute left in the half, as Northwestern is approaching the end zone. a little conservative for me in my mind for BC in regards to their offense. I mean, if I'm thinking offensively, I want the ball back in my hands. Timeout, Boston College. 53 seconds left, Northwestern trying to equalize this one up at 10. Hey, Wendy, me and the boys, we like our chicken with a little heat. Well, let's answer that call with a truckload of spicy chicken for the Branch Street Firehouse. We only use tender, whole breast fillets, kicked up with our blend of peppers and spices. That's a great sandwich. Got some zinc to it, huh? Our spicy chicken is the perfect balance between flavor and heat. Got a good kick, huh? Mm, you need a good kick. <laughs> Try one today, because like these guys, you know when it's real. Firefighter tested, firefighter approved. I agree. At Cheez-It, we expect a lot from our cheese. Hmm, what are you doing? Studying. Studying? Quantum physics. That's not mine. I don't know where that came from. Oh, uh, is that a check? That's not a good check, is it? What do you think? It's a bad check. We take the time for our cheese to mature before we bake it into every delicious cracker. Because at Cheez-It, real cheese matters. Now it's time for a one-of-a-kind part. One consumer electronics company used to rule the living room. But then something remarkable happened. A company from right here in America rose up, promising a revolution. Now, they're the number one LCD HDTV company with some of the industry's most awarded televisions. It's a new world. Vizio, entertainment freedom for all. 
Jay Schroff with you in studio. Coming up on the Sports Center, you halftime report. Auburn struggling in its season opener against Utah State. The Luke Fickle era begins in Columbus and will preview LSU Oregon. Big game tonight at Cowboys Stadium. Anish here in Boston, Northwestern finding their offensive groove. 76 yards over the course of eight plays covering two minutes and 32 seconds. Coulter has been effective on this drive and now it's first and goal from the three under a minute to go. And this will push Northwestern back. Untimely penalty here. Second big penalty deep in the red zone on the Northwestern offense tonight. BC was bringing pressure there. Linebacker got up in the gap. Offensive lineman got a little jittery. And... Five yards on the main third. Rob, you have to hold your water. That's what the offensive line coaches love to say. I'm sure there's a lot of pregnant women out there who would prefer another term be used. I can think of one for sure. <laughs> so now first and goal from the eight. 53 seconds left for Pat Fitzgerald as his Wildcats look to try and tie this one up before the break. Four wideouts. Schmidt the running back to the right of Colton. Nice fake. Coulter will keep it. Coulter to the right. And Coulter stood up at the four. Timeout, Northwestern. Keekley with the tackle. Second and goal with 40 seconds left. Kirk Herbstreet High School football returns here tomorrow. A pair of games first at noon. St. Xavier taking on Pickerington Central and at 3.30. Springfield versus Upper Arlington, just outside of the campus of Ohio State is where Upper Arlington is located. Noon and 3.30 Eastern here on ESPNU. St. Xavier has produced many stout football talents, including that young man, number 40, Luke Keekley. Impressive young man, got to speak to him yesterday. You would not picture him as a crazed middle linebacker in conversation off of the field. Very so composed, polite, mature young man telling us he, uh, you know, on, on some of those fall weekends, dad and his brothers, they wouldn't always go see the Bengals, you know, go hunt, go hunt do some fishing. fishing. But man, he's like all the greats, he flips that switch once he steps over that sideline. And Keekley at 10 tackles. So he's now gone 23 consecutive games with double-figure tackling amounts. Second to goal, 43 seconds to go. Empty backfield, five wideouts, three to the left of Coulter. BC's showing pressure. Will they bring it? Three on the play clock. They just do get it off. Coulter will run it, and Coulter will score! The three-yard touchdown run. Coulter looks a little gimpy coming out of there. We just talked about Luke Keekley having 10 tackles. He would have loved to made it 11 on that play. Had Coulter in his grasp. Couldn't get him down. Extra point is good. We're tied at 10. 10 play, 80 yard drive, covering two minutes and 47 seconds. And there's Coulter's numbers on this drive alone. Keekley coming right up the middle of your screen. Senses the run, just over pursues a little bit. Nice job cutting back up the field by Coulter. See him looking for a pass. 
Decides it's not there and tucks it to run. When you do that, you get in to score. Keekley, see the reaction, very frustrated. Could have come up with a big stop, and he's the type of player who wants to play the perfect game. Wants to better himself. You say, how does a guy get better who has had two outstanding seasons? Well, there's one of your answers right there. And he'd love to have that one back. Had an interception earlier in this game, almost able to score a touchdown on it. That interception led to BC's only touchdown of this half. Kane Coulter with his first touchdown of the season. Impressive drive for Kane Coulter, methodically moving the ball up the field. Worked the two-minute drill to perfection. He was very patient with the football, took what the defense gave him, took his shots when they were there, tucked it and ran it when he had to. Everyone knew Coulter could run it. He had 105 yards and two scores in the Ticket City Bowl. He's put on some weight. He's up to about 195, but he's feeling some aches and pains right now. And, and the big question is, how does the quarterback respond after an interception? Kane Coulter gave you your answer. Swigert and Kimball back. Steve Flaherty on to send it their way. It'll be Kimball. That is 13 across the 20, 25. Down at the 32. 32 seconds left, tie game. What's your play calling attitude right now, Danny? Well, I think it was clear based on the fact that they didn't use any timeouts. They're going to be pretty content going in at halftime at 10 to 10. I wish they would have used some of their own timeouts, not only to get their defense set and come up with a, a strategy, but also to give their offense a chance to run a two-minute drill. They're going to nail it and take it to the half. And that will be all she wrote for the opening half. The two sides traded field goals, and then they traded touchdowns. You know, both these teams will go in at halftime. They'll have a little bit to be, be happy about, and yet a little bit to be frustrated about. So the coaches will have a field day with making some coaching points. Which side has more work to do in your eyes? Uh, you know, they both have their share of work. They're both share of adjustments to make. I would say Northwestern clearly has the momentum with that touchdown right there. So that's it for the first half. Northwestern and BC tied up at tens. Now we send you back to Sports Center U with Anish and Matt Stitchko. All right, thank you very much, Rob. Uh, there you see it. Pretty close game at halftime. Northwestern and Boston College. Northwestern without Dan Persa. BC without Montel Harris, but it's BC getting the production out of the ground game. It looks like it, and I'll tell you what's been a little bit surprising, I think. The quarterback position, we talked about maybe being even more athletic for Northwestern with Kane Coulter in there. Obviously ran the football well for them in the bowl game. The fact that Boston College has given up over 100 yards rushing when they were the number one rush defense last year, they're going to have to tighten things up if they're going to be a run-oriented offense. We know this. It's a low-scoring first half in Chestnut Hill. Pretty much most of Alabama's games are going to be low-scoring, at least for their opponents. This is one of the best defenses in the country. Bama taking on Kent State in its season opener. Bama number two in the preseason AP poll. Trent Richardson, he's the man now. No surprises there, right? Powell driving in, run it behind that big right side. Anthony Steen and DJ Fluke are powering in for the score. AJ McCarron getting the starting nod at quarterback. We've seen both QBs, McCarron and Phillip Sims. McCarron seven for nine, buck 12. Touchdown pass to Marquise Mays. Bama up 14-0, and then this vaunted defense. Dante Hightower getting to the quarterback. Big and strong. It's not every day you see a linebacker take an offensive tackle and just throw him out of the way. Kent State right now, eight total yards so far in the first half. Gene Chizik defending BCS champion Auburn, opening at home against Utah State. Boy, rough start for the Tigers. Kerwin Williams early on, 43 yards to the house. So much has been made of what Auburn lost on the offensive side of the ball. Only returned four defensive players. Great hair by Williams, by the way. Barrett Trotter, he's now the starting quarterback with Cam Newton out in the NFL with the Panthers. And Trotter finds Emory Blake, 56-yard touchdown. Trotter's first career touchdown. Ties the game at 7-7, but Utah State going for it. Fourth and goal. It's the quarterback, Chucky Keaton. And the fact that they did it from a distance out shows that they feel like Utah State can play with these guys. Keaton, 13 of 15 in the first half. Meanwhile, Northwestern and BC, the game you're watching, that's all knotted up at 10.
It's not just where you are, but where you want to be. And with smooth drinking bush beer, the mountains get closer than you think. Bush. Isn't it time to head for the mountains? to know. Get it faster with 4G. It's the network of possibilities. AT&T. We care very much about our families and, and our Georgia football family. I want to model what a good father looks like, what a good husband looks like. I want our guys to see that. It's not just about football in Georgia. It's about life and it's about growing. If you think even the best bed can only lie there, ask me what it's like when my Tempur-Pedic moves. Talk to someone who owns an adjustable version of the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask me about my Temper Advanced Ergo. Ask me about having all the right moves. These are real Temper Advanced Ergo owners. Find one for yourself. Check out Twitter. Try your friends on Facebook. See what they have to say. Unedited. Goes up. Ask me what it's like to get a massage anytime you want. Goes down. Ergonomics. Ergonomics. Tempur-Pedic brand owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. <laughs> Ask me why I'm glad I didn't wait till I'm too old to enjoy this. Start asking real owners. Ask me how to make your first move. It's the perfect time to save up to $400 on your own Ergo. Find out more at Tempur-Pedic.com. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Andre Williams over 100 yards in the first half, starting in place of the injured Montel Harris, BC and Northwestern, all tied up at 10 at Chestnut Hill. Frank Beamer and Virginia Tech opening up against Appalachian State. App State, FCS team, noted giant killers. Remember the Michigan, Michigan game going back a few years, but a turnover in the first quarter. Virginia Tech would recover. Next play, David Wilson. He's the feature back for the Hokies now. No Ryan Williams, no Darren Evans, both playing on Sundays now. David Wilson is going to have to step up big. Virginia Tech loves to run the football. Later in the first half, 10-0 Tech. Josh Oldlesby around the end. Virginia Tech up 17-0 right now. It's 24-0. Hokies, Ohio State, home for Akron. It's been a summer of discontent. Interim head coach Luke Fickle looking to put all that behind his team. New starting quarterback Joe Bowserman, the senior. They talk about him being a drop back guy, right? Uh, what's this thing? I like the stutter step, yeah. huh? Breaking ankles, getting in the end zone. You like the athleticism, a gamer. For a guy who's got to step up in the quarterback position, vacated by uh, Terrell Pryor. That's Braxton Miller, highly touted freshman. Didn't see a ton of time so far in this first half. Bad snap. Buckeyes go three and out on that possession. With Bowserman, five rushes, 29 yards, 10 of 14, 133 yards passing, two TDs through the air. I think a strong performance from him. You get some time for Braxton early in his career. It's a good idea to let him go ahead and get some experience early in the season. And then Bowserman, another strike. Jake Stoneburner, two touchdown catches in this first half. Ohio State rolling against Akron. It's 21-0 late in that first half. Other scores from the Big Ten. Penn State all over Indiana State, up four scores there. Purdue down to Middle Tennessee. Bit of a surprise there. Not much expected from Middle Tennessee after a down year last year. Interesting, but Purdue obviously transitioning at that quarterback position right. once again early in the season. And Iowa with James Vandenberg, now the starting quarterback there as Ricky Stanzi has moved on. How about Missouri and Miami of Ohio? Don Treadwell, new head coach for Miami O. Missouri, 21-game non-conference win streak. First quarter, Mason Krasinski 
misses the 41-yard field goal, so we're still scoreless. And, hey, Lane Gabbert gone. James right. Franklin having himself a nice first half. And you know what? Missouri needs somebody to step up at the quarterback position. They've got a host of running backs, and they play good, strong defense to warrant their top 25 rank. Franklin here doing it with his feet. Getting into the end zone, 10-0 Missouri. Franklin 52 yards rushing, 10 of 17 through the air. Kane Coulter starting in place of the injured Dan Persa for Northwestern. His touchdown tied the game at 10 late. We are visitors, underdogs, party crashers, guests in a den of lions but we will prevail. Because today, we are more than conquerors. USA Prime Credit, tell Peggy your problem. Hey, Peggy, I got five dadgum charges here for Miss Priss's Cat Emporium. Dadgum? Now, Peggy, tell me, do, do I sound like a man who'd have five dadgum charges? at a Miss Priss's Cat Emporium? You break up, call back next week. I'm not too old to find you, son. Want better customer service? Switch to Discover. Rank number one in customer loyalty. It pays to Discover. I'm not a morning person. Janie, though, happy, active. It's not natural. At least I used to think that. Then I found five-hour energy. I couldn't believe the difference it made. Amazing. Coffee never did this for me. Uh, what are you doing? Had a five-hour energy. Thought I'd join you. Janie really noticed. Am I a morning person now? I'd say we're on speaking terms, which is more than I can say about... Five-hour energy. The cure for mornings. Weekend. And an endless buffet with a juicy steak. Only Golden Corral would include steak for breakfast. It's on our endless weekend breakfast buffet, still for one low price. And join us Monday, September 5th for Labor Day breakfast. During my years at Boston College, I won a Goldwater Scholarship to pursue research on the human brain. I was named a delegate to the UN Conference on Climate Change. I won the Truman Scholarship to improve the way medicine is practiced. We launched a startup to help reduce energy consumption. I won an NCAA award for helping teens in developing countries. I research immigration trends on three continents. Together, we are working to make the world a better place. What will you do? Welcome inside the studio with former Georgia standout Matt Stinchcomb and Ish Shroff here. The big game tonight, LSU. Oregon from Cowboys Stadium for LSU. They've got some suspensions to worry about. That includes starting quarterback Jordan Jefferson. Yeah, Oregon's dealing with suspensions as well. Well, They're going to have to transition at the quarterback position. They probably knew that going into this season. So Jarrett Lee is going to have to step up big under new offensive coordinator Greg Studrara's uh, play calling. And he's going to have to find some new targets on the outside. Terrence Tolliver no longer going to be on the receiving end of any LSU quarterback's passes this season. And he needs to find a way to stretch the defense. Otherwise, no Russell Shepard. That's exactly right. You've got Reuben Randall outside, and then you've got nobody else. Oregon's defense is going to be able to focus on the run game with Spencer Ware in the backfield for LSU. That's going to make it difficult for them to get yardage in big chunks in this ballgame. Jarrett Lee, not the best downfield passer. All right, meanwhile, on the flip side, Oregon, we saw what happened in the BCS championship game against a stout SEC defense. They struggled to run the ball. Well, Michael James couldn't get going. Is that going to be a challenge today? I think it will be, and I think it's not only because they're facing an SEC defense with a lot of speed, but it's also the time to prepare. And we've seen this before versus an Oregon offense. If defenses have a chance to acclimate to their pace of play, it hurts their running game, which can hurt the performance of Darren Thomas. He plays best off of play action. He gets the ball downfield and he gets it to Jeff Mail. Jeff Mail is no longer no. available, so he's going to have to find yet another target as well. LaMichael James is the engine in that run game, and versus Auburn, only 75 rushing yards total for the Oregon Duck offense. A lot of parallels with what LSU is going to feel from a personnel standpoint 
But watch John Chavis. He's going to put a bunch of horses on the field for him. As we saw, tough to sell play action when it's third and seven, second and nine all the time. The other big game tonight, Georgia against Boise State. Boise State, Titus Young, Austin Pettis, two key receivers. They have now graduated and they've moved on. But Kellen Moore still has Doug Martin. He does have Doug Martin, and Doug Martin sets the pace for that offense when you look at what they're able to do on first down. He gains seven yards a carry on average. That opens up the playbook. It's do whatever you want at this point. We can take shots downfield, and that's what Kellen Moore does better than anybody else as a passer in college football. He gets into a rhythm. He throws off of that play action fake, and as long as they're effective on the ground, there are opportunities for him to fit the ball into windows. He can get the ball downfield and stretch defenses and make them pay. He's got a strong offensive line on the left side. You're going to see a lot of new faces on the right side. Can they hold up against the size of this defensive front that Georgia's going to field? And one of their key receivers suspended for Boise State, so we'll see who steps up in the receiving game. Meanwhile, for Georgia, in Aaron Murray, he's not Kellen Moore, but he might be the best quarterback in the SEC. He might be. He's a similar mold to Kellen Moore. You look at him in stature, but also the fact that he is most effective, most efficient when the run game is working, or at least a semblance of a run game. They've got a decent chance of improving on that aspect with Isaiah Crowell at the running back position. But who's going to be on the receiving end of these Aaron Murray no. passes? We see A.J. Green here. He's playing for the Cincinnati Bengals. So once again, a quarterback that needs to find a target, it may be tight end Orson Charles, who has a mismatch for just about anybody because of his size and speed. Not talked about a lot, but one of the top tight ends in the nation. And can't forget about special teams. Brandon Boykin tweeting Boise State head coach Chris Peterson. Dear Coach Peterson, I dare you to kick me. You know what it means when it's all caps lock. Sincerely, me and my dogs. That could be a key component in this one. Field position and the return game. A lot of new faces for Boise State. What cost Boise State its only loss last year? Special teams missed the kick against Nevada. Hey, set your DVR. Stinch's favorite show, Palmer and Pollock. Mondays at 1 and 10 Eastern. Set those DVRs now. You put a lot of effort into creating the perfect evening. So we put a lot of effort into creating the perfect tortilla chip. Introducing new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Made with real ingredients cooked right in, a flavor you can see and taste in every bite. Because when we put in the very best, what you end up with only gets better. Experience new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Down by seven. Final play for the only thing that would make this any better is overtime. They'll need a miracle to win this football game. Drops back. Hines takes the pass at the 30. With the seam! Wow! Can you believe it? One man to beat! <laughs> We're headed to overtime! Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings Beer Sports. Field goal for the win! Are you ready for this summer's new look? The buzz is sexy skin, and you can have it too. The secret is the deep cleansing wash from Proactive. It keeps your chest, back, and shoulders clear, and it's yours free with this special summertime offer. I get breakouts on my back. It's like, ugh, you know, I gotta hide this. And so now it's really good to have a product like the Proactive Body Wash that works so quickly. Acne is out, and clear, sexy skin is in. So order the number one acne system for only $19.95 and the deep cleansing wash is free. And to celebrate the season, we're offering free shipping. I recommend it to almost all my clients because it clears up their chest and their back and they can wear a little strapless dress and feel really pretty. Get in on Proactive's hot summer deal right now. You get the deep cleansing wash and these extras free. A $72 value for just $19.95. And today, your shipping is free. With Proactive, this is the best my skin has ever been. And that feels great. Call 1-800-676-6359. We welcome you back to the ACC on ESPN. Boston College and Northwestern tied at 10s. ESPN News coverage of college football continues 
Later tonight, when we're done here, we'll send it down to Tallahassee as the number six Seminoles are in action at 3.30 here on the U. And then we'll go over to Gainesville, number 22, Florida, taking on Florida Atlantic at 7. And we'll wrap it all up at 10.30 Eastern, Grambling versus Alcorn State. College football live here on ESPNU all Saturday and Saturday night. When we return, we'll spin a forward focus on the second half of Northwestern and BC. At Cheez-It, we expect a lot from our cheese. Hmm, what are you doing? Studying. Studying? Quantum physics. That's not mine. I don't know where that came from. Oh, uh, do you... Is that a check? That's not a good check, is it? What do you think? It's a bad check. We take the time for our cheese to mature before we bake it into every delicious cracker. Because at Cheez-It, real cheese matters. Your car is everything. Your taxi, your moving van, your baby. And for over 30 years, AutoZone has had the parts you can count on to keep it going. But parts are just part of what we do. We're part buddy, part mentor, part of the American way of doing things. So whether you're Mr. DIY or a master mechanic, AutoZone has your back. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Would you like her to rephrase the question? I'm not going to be the person I'm expected to be anymore. Be unexpected. Bleu de Chanel. At Chanel.com. For 99 cents? Probably not. Our 99 cent chicken flatbread sandwiches, now in two bowl flavors, only at Taco Bell. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. Kickoff week. Welcome you back to the ACC on ESPN from the campus of Boston College. 10-10 at the break between the Big Ten Northwestern Wildcats and ACC's Boston College Eagles. Glad you're back here with us on a beautiful Labor Day Saturday here in Boston. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell. Time to take our forward focus to the second half. And if you're Northwestern, you're saying we need to replicate that last offensive drive. They really do, and I think they had that sense of urgency because there were two minutes left in the half. They went to that no huddle, and they used their tempo, tempo, tempo. They kept BC off balance, winded them a little bit, and when they started to do that, they really showed the ability to move the ball down the field. Kane Coulter, smart with the football, taking the shorter passes, using his legs to get the ball down the field. Really like the way they were aggressive on that last drive. They need to do it some more in the second half. That last drive, 10 plays, 80 yards in 247, capped by the Coulter. Touchdown on the flip side of your Boston College. Do what you're good at, Exactly. Right? I mean, this has been their MO for so long. They've got to establish the run. Use that physical pounding run game. Get Andre Williams involved a little bit more. He had their biggest play of the first half. You had this 69-yard run getting off to the edge. Once you do that, you start running the ball effectively. You suck up those linebackers. You get safety sniffing around the point of attack. And then you can do this. Use the play action. Get Chase Reddick outside the pocket and take your shot down the field. Williams with 103 rushing yards, 69 of them. Coming, though, on that one play as a team, 110 rushing yards. So the numbers may be a bit deceptive. Northwestern to receive the kickoff. 
And Mark will watch this one sail out of the end zone. So after that great closing drive by Kane Coulter and company, the guys from Evanston, Illinois, come right back out on offense. And they will have the first crack at trying to take their first lead of the game. You got to love that if you're Kane Coulter going into halftime feeling good about yourself. You want the ball back in your hands. Dan Persa on the sidelines, sporting the headset today. May be available next Saturday when they host Eastern Illinois. Coulter to the air, short little completion. Demetrius Fields with the grab. He had 49 receptions last season in his sophomore campaign for 516 yards and three scores. This Northwestern huddle, they do have different paces that they will play at. This one looks a little more controlled than what they did prior to the half. Little pistol formation here from the Wildcats to give to Adonis Smith. That hole closed quickly. Keekly was in double figures tackling wise in the first half. He tacks another one on. That should be number 11, I believe, for the game already for the junior linebacker from Cincinnati. If you're Boston College, you've got to disrupt this momentum by bringing some pressure, getting after Kane Coulter. First and 10, Coulter from the shotgun. Wide open is Lawrence. An easy pass play, and he'll be taken down right about at the 40-yard line, so a nice, hearty pickup of seven on first down. Lewis Jean and DeVito converging on the tackle. Second and short, they go to the ground. Smith. And that should be enough for another Northwestern first down. So two quick first downs for the Wildcats to start this second half. Northwestern picking up right where they left off. Play action. Coulter was looking left. Now he's going to scramble. And he'll pick up a handful of yards. That'll bring up second. Second and six. Northwestern there looking to take a shot down the field. BC was playing soft. Coulter tucked it. First is a great shoulder to lean on for Kane Coulter in between series and at halftime. Design play, Trumpy the give, Trumpy the hole, Trumpy across the 40, and more for Trumpy. He'll be dragged down, loses the ball. He was ruled out of bounds, though, at the 18. A gain of 34. Pierre Lewis with the touchdown saving tackle, but a big game there for the sophomore. Watch all the action coming this way of your screen. Roll out, Coulter's been running the zone option to the right, that time slipping underneath. Adonis Smith with the carry. Now this drive awfully reminiscent of the one that Northwestern concluded the first half with. One that resulted in a three-yard touchdown run by Coulter. Coulter the give to Smith. Smith hit hard as he crossed the 10-yard line. So bring up third and very short after the four-yard gain. BC very uncharacteristically is really just sitting back and playing conservative. Four wide out, Smith to the right of Coulter. BC is just sitting back, playing six guys in the, in the box, dropping a lot of guys into coverage. And Northwestern has just picked their way all the way down the field. This is like high-tempo, smash-mouth Big Ten football. <laughs> Four wide outs. They're strong to the right. Trumpy. Touchdown, Northwestern! Their first lead of the season.
Great job of the offensive lineman up front, the left side, creating some space for Trumpy to run, Trumpy to run through. Very uncharacteristic for this BC defense to give up a drive like that, back to back, no less. 17-10 Northwestern. That was easy. 80 yards in just over two minutes. Trumpy with his fifth career rushing touchdown. Northwestern with the advantage. Hey, Wendy, me and the boys, we like our chicken with a little heat. Well, let's answer that call with a truckload of spicy chicken for the Branch Street Firehouse. We only use tender, whole breast fillets, kicked up with our blend of peppers and spices. That's a great sandwich. Got some drink to it, huh? Our spicy chicken is the perfect balance between flavor and heat. Got a good chick, huh? Mm. You need a good kick. <laughs> Try one today, because like these guys, you know when it's real. Firefighter tested, firefighter approved. I agree. It's not just where you are, but where you want to be. And with smooth drinking bush beer, the mountains are closer than you think. Isn't it time to head for the mountains? One consumer electronics company used to rule the living room. But then something remarkable happened. A company from right here in America rose up, promising a revolution. Now, they're the number one LCD HDTV company with some of the industry's most awarded televisions. It's a new world. Vizio, entertainment freedom for all. Here's to the pursuit of better, faster, cleaner, funner. Here's to the pursuit of advancements that help make new engines possible and dreams a reality. Here's to the pursuit of another 100 years of earning America's trust. Not just oil, Pennzoil. Everyday low prices on Pennzoil, available at Walmart. Today at 3.30, the stage is set for a big year in Tallahassee as Florida State suits up against Louisiana Monroe. And head to the Swamp for Muschamp and Weiss's coaching debut in Florida. ESPNU College Football Saturday. The action begins today at noon. Rob Stone and Danny Cannell back here with you in Boston. Back-to-back 80-yard -back touchdown drives have given Northwestern their first lead of the season. Mike Trumpy. Capping it all off with a five-yard run. Kane Coulter, very effective as well. Ten plays, eight of them were rushing plays, covering 64 of the 80 yards. Boston College defense, one of the stingiest last season. They said it was a strength coming into the season, but Northwestern is putting up the yards on them early on here in the third. Weigert and Kimball back to receive the kickoff. Flaherty into a slight breeze. Kimball. Kimball at the 20. Hit hard at the 23 and then sent back. You look at BC, we just talked about how they were uncharacteristically struggling, but Northwestern carried that tempo. What they started at the second, at the first half, they carried over into this half. Kane Coulter doing it through the air, a little misdirection run to Trumpy was the big play of the drive. Capped it off, running behind the offensive line that has four out of five guys returning. A lot of veterans on that unit. Mike Trumpy's a guy they really figured to be key in their offense.
Probably not. Our 99 cent chicken flatbread sandwiches, now in two bold flavors, only at Taco Bell. Team is not something you do alone. Team is plural. Team is arms, legs, blood, sweat, and soul. A lot goes into team. But what we take away stays with us forever. We're CenturyLink, a new kind of broadband company committed to providing honest, personal service from real people. Five-year price lock guarantees, consistently fast speeds, and more ways to customize your technology. ESPNU College Football, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. The folks cheering on the guys in purple have a lot to be happy about right now. Northwestern, their first five drives, 139 total yards, three points. Their last two drives, 160 total yards and two touchdowns. And look how quickly and effectively they have done it. Momentum is all in the Northwestern camp right now. And they are about to take the field with the ball at the 34 and a chance to extend their lead. Danny, what does BC need to do defensively to slow this team down? Bill McGovern is one of the best defensive coordinators in the game. I do not think they will sit back and let this quarterback get comfortable. They've got to bring some pressure, get a lot of guys in the box. Play action, quick strike, wide left, complete. And some nice yaks by Jeremy Ebert. And that'll set up a second and three after the seven yard gain. Dan Persa, last season, first team all Big Ten quarterback, tore that Achilles tendon in mid November, unable to play today. This will be a keeper for Coulter. And he goes nowhere. Steele DeVito. Sophomore backer from Richfield with the tackle. Coulter got lit up at the end of that run. His helmet came off. And that's what you've got to do if you're BC. Coulter is very comfortable right now in the pocket, getting outside of it, running it. You've got to knock him around a little bit if you're BC. Third and one. BCD needs a stop. Jacob Schmidt. The running back for the Wildcats. Oh, and a big error here. False start, offense, number 65. Five yards, the down remains third. You see he showed some pressure and it was enough to throw off Northwestern. What's the term, Rob? Hold, Hold your, your water. water. <laughs> They have, a they have a hard time doing it when you're going to use a hard count. They have an even harder time doing it when they think there's pressure coming. BC had walked a linebacker up in there. They got a little antsy. Third and one to third and six. Coulter takes what is given to him. Schmidt the reception. Schmidt at midfield. First down, Northwestern. Well, BC is trying different things, but Northwestern has the perfect counter. Trying to bring pressure like we talked about. They pick it up. Coulter's able to find a back on a linebacker for another first down. This drive they are doing through the air. First and ten. Another, whoop, should have been a completion in and out of the hands of Fields. Second and ten for Northwestern. That ends a string of eight completed passes in a row for Coulter. And pretty, you know, simple underneath passes is pretty much what he's been using the most. Play action, quick strike. 
And there's another one. I mean, you talk about the Big Ten running game. You know, people talk about it being a couple yards in a cloud of dust. Well, that one was a short, quick pass. It's basically an extended handoff. Got a few yards. Drake Dunsmore with the reception. Third and seven. Five wideouts, three to the left of Coulter. See if BC maintains the pressure through the middle of the field. Getting safeties in position where these guys could be coming. Seven on the play clock. Steps into the pocket. Coulter will try and run it. Licked at the 45. Taken down at the 44. He is short. Pickup of four. And Northwestern will bring out their punt unit for the first time this half. It's a big win at this point for a BC defense that has struggled the last couple series. Came up, showed blitz. Had linebackers in the gaps ready to come and dropped out. Coulter's getting banged around. Talked about making him uncomfortable. He's taking a few shots now. Brandon Williams, the puncher on for Northwestern. Swigert back at his 12. Swigert lets it go over his head and into the end zone. So the BC offense trying to get something going in the second half. Their bread and butter is the running game, but Williams has not seen much space here. ESPNU College Football Saturday. The action begins today at noon. Got it. Don't be the last to know. Get it faster with 4G. It's the network of possibilities. AT&T. sucks not end of a long day tired but middle of the day places to go things to do deadlines to meet but all i want to do is close my eyes tired five hour energy fixes tired fast one shot back to work problem solved five hour energy fix the tired feeling buried by all the piles of paper in your home or office maybe it's time you traded in the old filing cabinet for a new office assistant Meet the Neat Desk Scanner and Organizer, the only scanner that actually thinks while it scans. With Neat Desk, all your important documents can be easily scanned and then organized with the NeatWork software. So that shoebox full of receipts instantly becomes a manageable expense report. That stack of business cards can go directly into your computer's contact list. Virtually any piece of paper automatically becomes a searchable document that you can find with a simple keyword. And here's the best part. If you call or visit us at tryneat.com right now, you can try the Neat Desk or the amazing Neat Portable Scanner for 30 days absolutely free. In fact, we'll even pay for the return postage if you decide to send it back. That's how confident we are that you'll love your Neat Organizer. So give us a call or go to tryneat.com for your 30-day trial and say goodbye to all that paper. BC down seven points, six and a half left here in the third quarter. Andre Williams, his first carry of the day, went for 69 yards. Since then, not a whole lot of space. He did have a short two-yard touchdown run in the second quarter, which gave BC their second lead at 10 to three. Since then, Northwestern has put up two touchdowns to take the lead at 17-10. Reddick in and out of the hands. A moment. I like the play call by Kevin Rogers. The execution was what was lacking. And the corners were soft. Reddick had Mobile on the outside and just misfired. This is a team a lot of people wondered how they'd do without Montel Harris, a back who is only a thousand yards away from breaking the all-time ACC rushing record. He's had two knee surgeries in the past nine months. They're hopeful he might be back next week. In the meantime, it'll be this guy, Andre Williams, carrying a majority of the rushing load. Brian Peters there to tackle him after the gain of three. 
And Andre Williams has proven capable of getting the type of productivity you had out of Montel Harris. Last year he had 175 yards rushing against Syracuse. So to me, the, the offensive line have to create some space, create some opportunities for him to make plays. We talked about that Syracuse game. He set a school record with 42 carries in that game. Third and seven. BC trying to avoid another three and out. Redding, hit as he throws. Has a man, caught at midfield. First down to MoMA. 28-yard pickup. Great play call and great recognition. MoMA's down at the bottom of your screen. We're on a quarter route, but look at all these blitzers coming for Northwestern. Great job of Chase Reddick staring down the face of the rush, buying just enough time, lofting a little touch pass so MoMA can go and run under it. It's the sign of a great quarterback, one who can take those kind of licks and deliver a strike. MoMA, six grabs for 105 yards. He only had 296 receiving yards last season. Play action. Reddick, under duress, throws it away. Flags stay in the pocket. Bryce McNall. Coach Fitzgerald, he wants the intentional grounding. All you have to do is get outside the tackle to tackle box. Chase Reddick running a little play action. And a scramble. Great job avoiding the first tackler. It's right on the borderline. I tell you what, I think Coach Fitzgerald might have a case there. That's coming from a quarterback, too, Rob. I mean, <laughs> good job of getting rid of the ball, though, by Reddick. So second and 10 upcoming for the sophomore Reddick. There's his numbers, 12 of 22. The pitch to Williams. Williams across midfield and then hit. And it was McNall who almost took down Reddick the play before there to drag Williams to the turf. And third and long coming up for the Eagles who have found no offensive rhythm here in the second half. You know, both of these teams have different looks on offense. You know, there's some with a little bit of air attack with Northwestern. BC would like to have a ground attack, but you can take away all that fluff. It comes down to the line of scrimmage. And so far, both sides of this ball have been owned by Northwestern. 309 total offensive yards for BC thus far. Reddick flushed out by some time to his right. Slings one down, too tall for his receiver, and the punt team will come back on. Last third down, Northwestern brought pressure and got beat deep because they had to have some one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside and that time. Played softer zone and got the pressure on Reddick without having to blitz anybody, so there was nowhere to go with the football. Quigley on the punt, Mark at his 10. He's calling everybody off, and it will be down inside the five. They'll mark it at the one. So special teams providing a burst, a much needed burst for BC, a 48 yard punt. ESPN News coverage of college football concludes later tonight, 10.30 Eastern. The Grambling Tigers taking on the Alcorn State Braves. You can see it right here on ESPNU, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Florida State follows us, and the University of Florida follows them here on ESPNU. What a wonderful slate of opening Saturday games ESPNU has for you today. Here in Boston, Northwestern with their first lead of the game on top of BC, 17-10. BC's defense has had to carry them the last couple years. Can they step up again, get the ball back in their offense's hands? Coulter, quarterback sneak, buys a little breathing room, give him three yards. So second and seven. It's been a source of frustration, I think, around this program. Not, not within the coaching staff, but more of the fans and the people that watch these this team and they want to see some offensive production because 
it's been very much a one-sided affair for this Boston College team. Northwestern staff really felt their tempo could slow the BC defense down, make them go side to side, wear them out. This is about as slow as Northwestern has gone offensively all afternoon, Danny. Well, I think they're being very careful right here. You saw the quarterback sneak in another run. They're just trying to get it out of here. Don't make a critical mistake. This is where you find out how much faith they have in Kane Coulter. Will they let him go to the air in this situation? Charles Brown, Jeremy Ebert, come on. See four wideouts right now at Coulter's disposal. Jacob Schmidt, the running back, third and five. Northwestern backed up deep. Coulter, under pressure, taken down. Max Holloway with the sack. Just what the doctor ordered for BC. BC's defense answered the call. Max Holloway, bottom of your screen, coming off the edge. Just runs right around Patrick Ward. Kane Coulter looking the opposite direction, senses it, thank goodness, or he would have taken a safety at least gets out of the end zone, but this is a tricky spot for the punting team. Brandon Williams at the back of his end zone. Big opportunity for Swigert to return this one. Calls for a fair catch, though, at the 40. 37-yard punt, excellent starting field position for BC. Pat Fitzgerald and his troops have had the momentum since the late stages of the first half. They've carried it throughout, but finally, the home team sensing some positive mojo going their way. Kevin Rogers was in the NFL the last five or six years coaching the Minnesota Vikings. Traditionally in the NFL, if you want to seize momentum, you get this type of opportunity, you take a shot. The offense said they're tired of being, quote, the poor relation around here. It's been a defensive team that's carried BC through the years. They're trying to start carrying their load, and they need to do it right now. They go to the ground. Williams, a big pickup on first down across the 35. This will be second and short after the gain of eight. David Wabusi, the junior from Houston, the Michael linebacker with the tackle. And there's where they've had most of their success, running it behind the left side of that offensive line. Behind the 6'8", 303-pound freshman, excuse me, junior, John Wetzel, making his first start. Williams stays in at tailback. He went over 100 yards in the first half, but remember, he had 69 on his first carry. They go back to Williams. He goes back to the left, and he goes backwards. Jack DiNardo, the defensive tackle, forcing him in the wrong direction. Loss of three. And two, run, two running plays called, a little conservative. Here you're forced into a situation where you've got to put this game on Chase Reddick's shoulders. The time creeping out in the third quarter. You've got to put confidence. Let, him, let the young 19-year-old sophomore make a play. Third and six. They are loaded to the left side. Williams the tailback. Man in motion is Swigert. And a timeout was called by Northwestern just before the snap was taken. Northwest, they're first. So Pat Fitzgerald and his staff seeing something that made them slightly uncomfortable. And Reddick will head to the sideline. A big third down and six coming up here for Boston College, a team, Danny, that has had no offensive momentum to speak of here in the second half. If you're calling this play, what are you dialing up? Well, I think you got to get good protection for your quarterback. That time Northwestern was showing blitz, and then they called timeout, had trouble setting up. So this time you got to make sure you protect your quarterback and chase Reddick, but you also want to talk to him. Say, hey, go through your progression. Make sure you make the right read. If the first down's not there, we can live to you know play another down. So I think they're going to give him an opportunity to make a play for this team. So Reddick and the troops come out, the super fans trying to cheer them on. BC opened up this game with a field goal to take a lead. They scored a touchdown later on in the first half to take another lead. Since then, it's been all Northwestern. They don't get it all. This is a situation where they might think about fourth down. Third and six, Larmont in motion to the left. Reddick fires one. Complete first down. Swigert is there. Huge pitch and catch. 
Rob, we just talked about giving your quarterback some protection, a chance to set his feet. Look at the pocket created by this BC offensive line. Reddick's able to set his feet and deliver a bullet on the outside to Swigert. Swigert led the team in receiving last season. That, Danny, his first reception this afternoon. Reddick closing in on 200 yards to the ground. Williams. Tyler Scott, the tackle after the gain of just one. And that will do it for the third quarter. The Eagles shut out in the third quarter, but they've got a drive going here as Frank Spaziani and company try and tie this one up at 17. Northwestern came out smoking to start the half, and they're still holding on to the seven-point advantage. The Palmer and Pollock Show, Monday on ESPNU. Now it's time for a one of a kind part. One consumer electronics company used to rule the living room. But then something remarkable happened. A company from right here in America rose up, promising a revolution. Now, they're the number one LCD HDTV company with some of the industry's most awarded televisions. It's a new world. Vizio, entertainment freedom for all. We'll be here if you get off early. Is he working the late shift again? Yep. Hey, you made it. Power outage. That's the third one this week. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. That was my boss. At Cheez-It, we expect a lot from our cheese. Hmm. What are you doing? Studying. Studying? Quantum physics. That's not mine. I don't know where that came from. Oh, uh, do you... Is that a check? That's not a good check, is it? What do you think? It's a bad check. We take the time for our cheese to mature before we bake it into every delicious cracker. Because at Cheez-It, real cheese matters. Spend the first college football Saturday of the season with ESPNU. The stage is set for a big year in Tallahassee as Florida State suits up against Louisiana Monroe. Armed with 16 returning starters and a top-notch recruiting class, expectations are high for the Seminoles. And head to the Swamp for Muschamp and Weiss's coaching debut. With a new pro-style offense, the Gators look to make an impression on Florida Atlantic and the rest of the country. Here come the Gators. ESPNU College Football Saturday. The action begins today at noon. Boston College led offensively by their All-American linebacker Luke Keekley. His fifth career interception in the second quarter led to this short touchdown run by Andre Williams. BC on top until Northwestern before half forced to go to their two-minute offense and really was a difference maker for them. Once they found their rhythm, got rhythm, got into a tempo. They moved the field methodically down the field, capped off by a Mike Trumpy run. And now it's BC offensively trying to get that rhythm. A second and nine coming up right now as we begin the fourth quarter. Andre Williams, first half, 11 rushes, 103 yards. This half, eight rushes for only five yards. They got to get him going. Williams is the tailback behind Reddick. They go to Williams, to the 25, and then he slowed down. We send it to the studio for an update. Which one's the, uh, the last two? Utah State and Auburn. 
The Tigers down 24-21. Barrett Trotter, Travante Stallworth. That made it 28-24. The Tigers taking the lead. Still close, though. Back to you. That one you can see live over on ESPN2. We've got a great one here, though, on ESPNU. BC down seven. Third and five. Reddick rolling to his left. Has a man. It'll be well short, though, of the first down. Alex Amidon with the reception. Danny, do you go for it here on fourth? Right now, you take the points. Spaziani going to take the safe play. This is a very much a defensive struggle right now. Northwestern, they were able to stop the last drive when they had him pinned down. Nate and Freeze it, comes on, Danny. He connected from 19, but was wide right from 31 at this end zone. This from 40 yards. And well off target. I think I saw a video of Aaron Andrews earlier this week striking a better ball than that one. That's just cold, Rob. I won't, I won't go there, but that was not his best kick, I'm sure. Uh, that not might be the close. understatement of the afternoon. <laughs> uh, his reaction right now is, guys, from now on, we may be going for it on fourth down. But I think this shows the confidence they have in their defense. They believe they're going to get the ball back with the score the same. Northwestern comes out with that hurry up offense. Colts are running left. He'll keep it. And he's smothered at the 21. In the first half, we talked about how BC, in order to stop that zone option run on the outside, you got to string them out. There you saw Kane Coulter running sideways. Connor O'Neill with the tackle, loss of one, brings up second and 11. As long as they're running sideways, they can't hurt you. Four wide outs. Dunsmore, the man that went through motion. Coulter will step up, run it, tackle, maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. So third and long, and again, Connor O'Neill there with the tackle. O'Neill. Number two on the depth chart at right tackle behind Dylan Quinn has been very productive on this series. Third and long, the BCD would really love a three and out here. They've got a little more enthusiasm now, a little more momentum work in their direction. Let's see if they can come up with one more big stop. Coulter over the middle, complete, and a first down. Jeremy Ebert with a big-time grab. Gain of 23 yards on the strike from Coulter. That was a clutch throw by Coulter, standing in the pocket, straight down the middle of the field to Ebert, delivers a strike. Just over the hands of Connor Wojak as well, and now he pushed the pile forward a few more yards. Mike Trumpy with the game. Northwestern continuing to play up-tempo offense. Trumpy, another give. First down. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Northwestern in the white and the purple. Their opener on the road at the ACC's Boston College Eagle team. Both these sides went 7-6 and six last year. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell here with you. Northwestern, strong finish to the first half, an equally strong start in the second half. BC's offense trying to catch up, but right now it's their defense trying to catch their breath. Adonis Smith catches this one. Met in the backfield, can't get away from the tackler. Nick Clancy with the loss of three on the tackle. Dan Persa, the Heisman candidate, senior from Pennsylvania, not active today, trying to recover from that ruptured Achilles tendon he suffered in mid-November. So they go with their number two, Kane Coulter, who has been very impressive, particularly here in the second half. Coulter, the gift. Ebert has it. Not a whole lot of blockers. He'll make something out of nothing and 
just barely crossed the line of scrimmage, but that could have been far worse, a gain of four. Dominic Apia with the tackle. This offense very efficient under Dan Purser, and not much drop-off today under Kane Coulter. 17 to 24, been very accurate. Had the one interception, was a little thrown behind his wide receiver. But overall, I think Dan Purser feels very comfortable with the hands of Kane Coulter running this offense. Third and nine. Coulter has a man. Complete. Inside the 15, Christian Jones, the two freshmen. And he goes to that left hamstring. He's struggling right now as Jones trying to get off the field before they run another play. He won't have time. Northwestern lining it up, first and 10. Adonis Smith, the carry to the 10. Runs into some bodies, leans down to about the six and a half. And now Jones, after that big grab, limps off the field. Christian Jones, a true freshman from Houston, they were very, very excited about. Had an ACL tear in high school. That's why he didn't get recruited quite as heavily as once thought, but Northwestern jumped all over it, said, we'll take him. Jones's mom, very impressed with Pat Fitzgerald and the staff, and the fact that they stayed with their son through the process was pretty much down to Northwestern and Rice. They went to Northwestern. He's a ESPN top 150 recruit, a big signing for Northwestern. Adonis Smith, the tailback. Play action. Coulter thinking about running it across the five, spins, and down at the two. This is going to be awfully close to the first down marker. They're going to call it third and one. That's a long, or rather a short one. Come some big bodies. Jack Kanaka, big number 83, comes in at tight end. The fullback Tyrus Jones there as well. For a team that spreads it out, this is a situation they're not real comfortable being in this kind of big personnel unit. There's Pat Fitzgerald running all the way on the field to make sure there's a timeout called. He looked like he was ready to line up. <laughs> he was that far out. Time out. Northwestern. Coach Third Fitzgerald second. still showing the wheels. Media timeout. Looked like he was ready to go out there and tackle somebody. Big play when we return. Hey, Wendy. Me and the boys, we like our chicken with a little heat. Well, let's answer that call with a truckload of spicy chicken for the Branch Street Firehouse. We only use tender, whole breast fillets, picked up with our blend of peppers and spices. That's a great sandwich. Got some drink to it, huh? Our spicy chicken is the perfect balance between flavor and heat. Got a good kick, huh? Mm, you need a good kick. <laughs> Try one today, because like these guys, you know when it's real. Firefighter tested, firefighter approved. I agree. Would you like her to rephrase the question? I'm not going to be the person I'm expected to be anymore. Be unexpected. Bleu de Chanel. At Chanel.com. It's not just where you are, but where you want to be. And with Smooth Drinkin' Bush Beer, the mountains are closer than you think. Bush. We're gonna climb a mountain, the highest mountain. Ain't a never coming back. Isn't it time to head for the mountains? Can't you see? Here's to the pursuit of better, faster, cleaner, funner. Here's to the pursuit of advancements that help make new engines possible and dreams a reality. Here's to the pursuit of another 100 years of earning America's trust. Not just oil, 
Pennzoil. Everyday low prices on Pennzoil. Available at Walmart. ESPNU College Football brought to you by AutoZone. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell back here with you. Northwestern up by seven. They are awfully close to tacking on another seven. That's a look at this current drive. Four minutes for them is an eternity. Coulter has been huge on third down this drive. Two for two for 50 yards. First and goal from the one. Adonis Smith, the tailback, the fullback, Tyrus Jones. Coulter, the pitch. Smith, the touchdown. Kane Coulter running the option down the line, draws up BC's defense, pitches it to Donna Smith, who walks it in. Third different Wildcat to run for a touchdown this afternoon. Extra point is good, and the biggest lead of the game now for Northwestern. They're up 24-10. Coulter ran left, pitched it, and Smith, maybe the fastest running back on the team, pushes it in. Dan Persa, yeah, he can still celebrate. Your car is everything. Your taxi, your moving van, your baby. And for over 30 years, AutoZone has had the parts you can count on to keep it going. But parts are just part of what we do. We're part buddy, part mentor, part of the American way of doing things. So whether you're Mr. DIY or a master mechanic, AutoZone has your back. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone. AutoZone. We're CenturyLink, a new kind of broadband company committed to providing honest, personal service from real people. Five-year price lock guarantees, consistently fast speeds, and more ways to customize your technology. You put a lot of effort into creating the perfect evening. So we put a lot of effort into creating the perfect tortilla chip. Introducing new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Made with real ingredients cooked right in, a flavor you can see and taste in every bite. Because when we put in the very best, what you end up with only gets better. Experience new Tostitos Artisan Recipes. We are visitors. Underdogs. Party crashers. Guest in a den of lions. But we will prevail. Because today, we are more than conquerors. Anish Roff here in studio, the AT&T Player of the Week. It's Baylor's Robert Griffin III, RG3, 21 of 27, 359 yards, five touchdowns, and an upset win over TCU last night. Text VOTE to 55862 from your mobile phone to vote and for a chance, set a trip to the national championship. Rob? 21 unanswered points here in Boston for Northwestern and East, and they are now on top 24 to 10. Northwestern has won five straight season openers. They are in good shape to make it six in a row here. BC not done, but they're not exactly an offense built to come from behind. A big return would help matters here for the Eagles. Kimball, Swigert, 
Back deep for BC. Kimball, no return. Plenty more college football coming your way when we are done here. We'll head down to the Sunshine State. Jimbo Fisher and Florida State taking on Louisiana Monroe. Danny Cannell somewhat fired up to watch that game. Seminoles ranked number six in the land after that. Will Muschamp making his head coaching debut for number 22 Florida as they host Florida Atlantic. Both those games are live right here on ESPNU. Interested to see what a coach like Will Muschamp can do with all that talent he's going to have in Gainesville. Important drive here for the BC offense. They'll go to the air. Reddick complete. First down, Larmon with the grab out of bounds at the 32 and stops the clock. Most importantly, stops the clock. When Chase Reddick has had time to stick his foot in the ground, he's been very accurate. Had the one mistake early in the game, the one interception. But really, the fact that BC has struggled running the ball has really hurt this offense. Just 13 first downs thus far for the Eagles. Reddick, that might be a busted play. He is busted down to the turf. Brian Peters with the third Wildcat sack of the afternoon. You see a safety blitz by Northwestern all the way from the secondary. Comes in unblocked. I got to believe that's on the quarterback, knowing that you can't pick up a safety in that protection. Got to find a way to get rid of it. Nice call by Mike Hankwitz and company. Yep, this is a team that... You know, they talked about not knowing what BC was going to do, have to make adjustments. Well, there's one that was very successful. Second and 18 on a vital drive here for the Eagles. Reddick to his left. Brings up third and long. And you look at the comparison in offenses today. Northwestern, once they found their tempo, really started to move the ball, ball effectively. BC has not been able to find any rhythm in any aspect of their game, either passing or running the ball. That's the thing that's been, you know, uncharacteristic for BC is they typically have been able to run the ball, just haven't been able to pass it. Approaching eight minutes left in this one. Third and 18 for BC. Reddick, complete, first down to midfield. And Swiger with the reception, his second of the game. Wow, a third down and long to go. Chase Reddick buying a little bit of time, sensing the field, realizing where the line of scrimmage is, stays behind it. Pressures it, finds Billy Swigert for a big, big conversion. 26-yard gain. First down at midfield. Down 14 are the Eagles. Reddick, a 19-year-old sophomore QB. Intended for Andre Williams. Ben Johnson was in his face. Chase Reddick knew where he wanted to go with the football. Ben Johnson, the Sam linebacker, got a hand in his face, was able to throw off pass. Chase Reddick with a lot of yardage. He'd like to have the one interception back when he forced one on third and long. You know, I think it's it's a, ch it's a chance where he's been able to show some of what he's capable of doing. He just needs a little bit of help around him. Some guys to make some big plays for him. Get the running game to assist him as well. Play action. Reddick going deep in and out of the hands of Coleman. Had it for a moment, almost had it again, but an incompletion. And third and ten now for BC. Great play call. They run a little play action pass, trying to get the safeties up. Watch the double post route. Chase Reddick does a good job of reading it out, sees the safety go with the first route. Tries to hit the second post behind it. Delivers a great pass. Puts it right on the fingertips. Jonathan Coleman just could not come down with it. Some proactive play calling, but now it's third and 10 from midfield, and you're down 14. 
Seven and a half left in this one. Complete. Where will they mark it? Great grab by Swigert. This will be oof, right on the line. Brian Peters with the tackle and the chains move. What a completion. Big time throw and catch, but really impressed by Billy Swigert with the presence of mind to come down with that ball so many times. You get a receiver, he's got to extend for the football, and yet he still absorbed the hit and came down with it. Swigert on the Bolitnikoff watch list, the Bolitnikoff award given to the most outstanding wide receiver in college football. First and 10 for BC. They stay with their aerial attack and going deep. Looking for Moma. Has it inside the five. Fani Moma, six feet six. On the outside, just runs a straight go route. Watch him attack the corner. He's back. But in this case, you've got to make a play. You give your receiver a chance to catch the ball. Might have got away with a slight little push off, but nothing the official's going to call. That's just playing football. 38-yard gain. Moma, seven receptions, 143 yards. BC in business. First and goal. Williams the tailback. They give it to Williams. And Williams will be stuck short. David Wabusi. The middle linebacker with the tackle. We head it quickly to the studio. Auburn and Utah State, Rob, and boy, Auburn, the defending national champs, in some trouble. Chucky Keaton, quarterback keeper, 31-28 Aggies, less than nine minutes to play in the fourth. Back to Chestnut Hill. My, 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 number 23, Auburn. Having some issues with Utah State. Tell me somebody saw that one coming. BC down 14, but they're within inches of pull within seven. ESPNU College Football Saturday. The action begins today at noon. Down by seven. Final play for the only thing that would make this any better is overtime. They'll need a miracle to win this football game. Harris slot right drops back. Hines takes the pass at the 30. With the seam! Oh, can you believe it? One man to beat! <laughs> We're headed to overtime! Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. Field goal for the win! Oh! Don't be the last to know. Get it faster with 4G. It's the network of possibilities. AT&T. Ask me. Even if you think your mattress is just fine. Ask me what it's like to get your best night's sleep every night. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? It's not a Sealy or a Simmons or a Serta. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Ask me about staying asleep. These are actual Tempur-Pedic owners. Ask someone you know. Check out Twitter. Try your friends on Facebook. You'll hear it all, unedited. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Ask me if it's a good value. Just ask me. There are over 4 million Tempur-Pedic owners, and they're more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me why I feel better every morning. Ask me why someone who's never had an ache or a pain is in love with this bed. Start asking real owners. Ask me how we took the first step. Take the first step. Call today for your free information kit with DVD, 1-800-710-8328, or visit Tempur-Pedic.com. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Something finally to cheer about here in the second half for Boston College. They're within inches and an extra point of making this a seven-point game. They've gone 79 yards in nine plays. Second and goal. The big boy is in for BC right now. Williams, your tailback. Williams the give, Williams in. 
his second touchdown of the afternoon. Rob, you got the nickname of O-Line U. You got to put it in the hands of your big boys. Exactly what they did. First points of the second half for BC. Kicking has been a bit of an issue today for Nate Freeze. He's missed two field goals, but is perfect on that extra point. BC was going nowhere fast, but things are starting to get interesting with six minutes left. Williams, his second score, his head coach, he approves. Janie, though, happy, active. It's not natural. At least I used to think that. Then I found five-hour energy. I couldn't believe the difference it made. Amazing. Coffee never did this for me. Uh, what are you doing? Had a five-hour energy. Thought I'd join you. Janie really noticed. Am I a morning person now? I'd say we're on speaking terms, which is more than I can say about... Five-hour energy. The cure for mornings. September. There is an energy in this building. It's the opening night of the college football season. It's loud, it's hot. Excitement abound. He's got great speed. Wow, big stop right there. What a throw. of 30 for 30, this revealing and heartfelt documentary explores how one man survived. He would not be denied. Overcame and triumphed. He's running over people! Of course, it was the greatest that's ever met. SEC Storied, an all-new four-part series on ESPNU. Herschel debuts Wednesday at 8. Thank you. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell back here with you on the campus of Boston College. The Eagles have just pulled within seven with six minutes left in this one. Chase Redding, some big throws in the midst of that 10-play, 80-yard drive, covering 324. Williams capping it with a one-yard run. In the second quarter, Williams had a six-yard touchdown run. Coaches named Chase Reddick the starter early. Said they wanted to put all their confidence in him. I, I think you see why, what he's capable of doing. They want to give him the opportunity to succeed. Mark and Schmidt back deep for Northwestern. It'll go to Mark. At his two. To the 20, 25. And taken down at the 26. We take a look now at some great teamwork brought to you by Russell Athletic. Northwestern with a key drive earlier, their last scoring drive. King Coulter mixing it around, giving a lot of opportunities to a lot of different wide receivers. Mix and run and pass. Christian Jones, the true freshman, with a big catch. Doing it with his legs, giving BC's defense fix. And then finally flips the option out to Adonis Smith for the touchdown. Boston College fans and alumni did not have a whole lot to cheer about here in the second half of breaking the action. As there's an eagle down. But the BC alums are strong and supportive and they stick with the program. Mark Herzlick, former All-American linebacker and undrafted rookie with the New York Giants. Giants sending me a tweet moments ago. 
What did it say? It says, tell BC fans I said I miss playing in Chestnut Hill and love watching the BC Eagles fly around the field. I may get this tweet framed. I'm not sure yet, <laughs> but I'm thinking about it. I would. Why not? Guy's a legend around here. Great story. Incredible athlete. And hopefully he'll be playing in the NFL for some time. This program has produced some wonderful talent, some wonderful personalities as well. Matty Ice, Matt Ryan, Herzlick, and now Keekley. And Keekley and his D need to come up big right there. And there's Keekley with another stick on the run by Trumpy. Time approaching five and a half minutes. Coulter loses the snap and smothers it. Max Holloway there to fall on top of Coulter. Loss of six yards. Not what Northwestern needed. Third and long now. Little low snap, but he's got to come up with that. Got to secure the football before you start running. Alumni Stadium is into it. It is shaking right now. These fans get behind their defense. Want to get that one more opportunity to tie this game up. All kinds of time. He'll run it. Across the 25 and then hit in the hip. C.J. Jones with the hit. The punt team comes on for the Wildcats. Northwestern tried to set up a screen pass to give an opportunity to get that long third down. BC was all over it, saw it from the get-go, and they were swarming to the football. BC will get a chance to tie this game up. Brandon Williams, the punter, he stands at his 10. Third three and out for Northwestern. Billy Swiger back at his 29 to field the punt. Flag on the play. Swiger calling off his troops, and look at this one roll inside the 20 and just shy of the 15, out of bounds at the 18. And some extracurricular activities at the 40. We move on after that 57-yard punt. Let's see what the flag is. Illegal formation, five in the backfield. Offense, five yards. Replay, fourth down. And BC will absolutely <laughs> take that call. It's a big break for them right there. While we have a quick break, we send it back to the studio. Anish? All right, a reminder coming up at 3.30 Eastern on ESPNU. Florida State against Louisiana Monroe. A lot of expectations for Jimbo Fisher this season. Let's go back to Chestnut Hill. Thank you, Anish. You know, Danny Cannell is looking forward to watching that one, as are a lot of fans. A lot of ESPN analysts think Florida State has the schedule to get to the national championship game. Here's the point. Swigert tracks to his left. At the 34, he fields it. Another flag on the play. He crosses the 45 and is taken down. So back-to-back -back flags here. First one was on Northwestern. Let's see what the result of this one is. Long discussion During the return, here. illegal block in the back. Returning team number 29. 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. So that'll put BC back 10 yards. They had no momentum to speak of entering the fourth quarter. Things have changed quickly. What do they need to do this drive besides get some points? Well, I think Chase Reddick, he's got a lot of confidence going right now. Found a nice connection with MoMA and also Swigert as two wide receivers. I'd keep working those guys in the game with three minutes and 44 seconds. You don't have to be in a tremendous rush. You can still go through your reads. You don't have to get it all at once. 
So just keep going through your progressions. Redding, 22 yards shy of 300. Two timeouts left for Boston College. Play action. Quick strike, first down. Again, Moma having a wonderful afternoon. 18-yard gain for the senior from Greenlawn, New York, who started all 13 games last year. Even saw some time at defensive end on third and long. Moma, eight grabs, 161 yards. Looks like Reddick may have found his comfort guy. I think so. He's a huge target out there. I would work him all day long. You see BC not really going with a tremendous amount of tempo because they've got the luxury of having three minutes left. Northwestern bringing some pressure. Picked up very well. Going deep and never a chance of that one happening. Excellent coverage. Deep by Jerevin Matthews from Cannonsburg, PA. Great spot there in the southern hills of Pittsburgh. Chase Reddick politicking for his receiver, Colin Larmon. Just running a straight go route, trying to get behind the defense. Jerevin Matthews, a little bit of contact, but if anything, that ball is overthrown. Hey, you got to play the part of politician as a, as a quarterback. Try to state your case out there. Three wide outs, two to the right of Reddick. Williams, the tailback, picked up the pressure and a diving grab, unsuccessful there by Swigert. So now third and 10 upcoming for the Eagles. Third and 10 here for Boston College. What you've got to be thinking if you're Chase Reddick is we don't have to get this here. You don't have to force the ball because this is clearly four down territory. Trust your protection, go through your reads. If it's not there, maybe even tuck it. Just keep it positive. Reddick. And that was some miscommunication between he and the receiver. So the clock stops at 2.57. BC has two timeouts left. A fourth and 10. And it looks like, as of now at least on the field, BC is going to go for it. Miscommunication between Reddick and MoMA there. They've run so many go routes, that time trying to run a comeback. Do you go for it here? I think at this point in the game, 257, they thought about it. I mean, that's what I was just talking about with Reddick, you know, thinking you're going to come back and try to go for it this down. The game's on the line right here. Massive play coming up here. Reddick is taken down. No, he gun loads it and is caught, bobbled around, hits the turf. An incompletion. Northwestern will take it over. At the 42-yard line, Andre Williams had it in a desperation throw from Reddick and then lost it. Well, in a fourth down situation, all you try to do is find a play. Even when Reddick gets pretty much in the grasp of the defensive lineman, he still finds a way to try to get it to Andre Williams, who can't come down with it. Northwestern's defense comes up with a big stop. Tyler, Tyler Scott wrapped around Chet, uh, Williams and then comes back to break up the pass. Sophomores react. So 248, two timeouts left. Trumpy the give. You know, I think a lot of people are probably questioning the, the play call there with fourth down and 10 to go, but you have to take in consideration what's happened with this offense up to this point. They've struggled to move the ball. They had the, the field position where they were at least threatening to cross the field. I think that was probably their biggest concern, and they haven't had tremendous amount of success. They've given up 24 points to this Northwestern team, so getting the ball back was not a given. Clock continues to tick in this Northwestern offense that likes to go at a high pace slows down to a crawl and really they're still in the no huddle just because that's what they do but they will they will milk the clock another give and the intelligence staying inbounds by trumpy we're under two minutes to go and now bc has to burn a timeout they have one left 
You Mike. saw Trumpy heading for that sideline, and then he put on the brakes. That was a great heads-up move. These are a bunch of smart kids from Northwestern. Great field awareness, keeping that clock moving and forcing the timeout call from BC. If you're not oversaturated by football today, you're in luck. We have more for you tomorrow. Kirk Herb Street High School football returns to the U tomorrow. Two games, one at noon, St. Xavier taking on Pickerington Central, then at 3.30 Eastern Springfield versus my dad's alma mater, Upper Arlington. This would be a great matchup. St. X always produces some studs. One of them out in the field today, Luke Keekley. Will your, dad, will your dad be at that game? He will not. <laughs> I think my dad was just made aware that that game is being played. <laughs> there is Keekley, the All-American, who went over 10 tackles in the first half. And, well, he's got some issues. 18 total tackles for Keekley. And for him to pull himself off that's got cramp written all over it i think and he is not happy mm -hmm. to be the type of competitor he is in this situation critical third down to try to give the ball back to your offense having to come out you can see the frustration you don't want to be that cramp he's angry at it third and three for coulter and company need to get to the 32. Trumpy will be stopped short. It's going to be close. Trumpy had a very close second surge. The first initial stop looked like he was going to be way short and then gave a little extra push and got closer. Now Northwestern's got a decision to make. Do they try to kick this long field goal where the percentage is probably slim that they make it, or do they try to ice the football game with a fourth and one situation here? I think they're going to go for it and try to win this game and get out of it, keep in their own hands, rather than risk missing a field goal and giving BC a chance to get the ball back. Here's a look at Trumpy. Talked about his second surge. Looked like the ball might have been knocked loose when he did try it. Take another look at that. Has it there. Oof. It's tough to see that ball, but... Well, BC used their last time out here. Operator, please put... One five five on the clock. One five wow. five, please. Wow, they are adding a ton of time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One Oop. four one. Okay, right. big difference. That was there. a big difference. Huge difference. So they're going to add two seconds from 139 to 141. There's Trumpy on the sideline. Fourth and one. Boston College out of timeouts. Northwestern with the first down here can ice it. And that's what they're going to try to do. Keep it in their own hands. Not worry about a, a lengthy field goal, which would give BC great field position. Luke Keekley back on the field. It's a big physical Northwestern offensive line. Four out of five returning starters. Got to believe they can pick up a short yarded situation here to win the game. If you're going to take on the likes of Nebraska, Michigan State, and Penn State, three Big Ten teams that Northwestern plays, you've got to convert in this type of situation. And now an official review. So that BC timeout may have bought the officials upstairs in the review booth some bonus time to look at that potential fumble. I think they're looking at a couple things, the potential fumble and the spot. And maybe the clock as well. They seem to have figured that one out. Another look at what may be a fumble by Trumpy. Took the big lick, that ball is out. Number 19, Sean Sylvia delivered a blow and as soon as contact was made, Trumpy spit the ball out. See Sylvia coming into your screen, laying the shoulder. Kasim Edabali was the one who slowed him down. And then Sylvia there to try and blast it out.
Have you seen anything from those replays, Danny, to say nothing that was a fumble? No, nothing conclusive. I mean, I think it was a fumble, but the ruling on the field is confirmed. It was fumbled and recovered by Northwestern. All right then. Well, the officials want to make sure they got it right. And this is your ball game. Interesting bit of a chess match there with Northwestern calling the timeout, taking the time to look at it, see what BC had to offer. Eagles without a timeout. Down seven, they must hold here. Coulter from the shotgun. Coulter will keep it met behind the line of scrimmage. The Eagles have life. Sylvia. First on the scene with the big hit. BC out of timeouts. 97 seconds left. Down seven. A couple of great plays by Sean Sylvia, the redshirt freshman. Earlier it was on Trumpy on the third and short, this time in fourth and short. Comes from the safety position, meets Coulter all the way in the backfield. That was a huge turn of events. D.C. must go 64 yards. Reddick steps in, completes to Williams. He's met immediately at the 39. And Reddick's slow to get up. He took a hit. He finally bounces up. Ben Johnson there with the tackle. And I know he's hurting a little bit, but you got to have a sense of urgency now. The clock is ticking down. Reddick. Can't take a sack here, throws this one away, no flags. Kevin Watt forcing that one. And Reddick is really hurting here. Reddick is struggling, but they did find a way to get the ball, and there's a late, late flag saying it was intentional grounding, but I gotta believe all he's gotta get is outside the tackle. That is right on the borderline. Second time we've seen Reddick unloaded on that proverbial borderline. The quarterback was out of the pocket, but the pass did not cross the line of scrimmage. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. That's the challenge you run into. Not only do you have to get outside of the pocket, you have to get it in the vicinity of the line of scrimmage. And Chase Reddick, all he could do with a defender hanging on him was get it about directly sideways. In this position, third down and long, I got to think MoMA's got to get a shot. Give your 6'6 guy a chance, but he's not in the game. They go from second and six to third and 16. Reddick takes a hit as he delivers. Complete. Amidon, shy of the 45 and shy of the first down marker. Big time throw from Chase Reddick. Cross field, deep in cut. And now they've got a fourth down. 14 yard gain, fourth and two. Reddick under center. Rolls to his left, slings one, complete. Where are they going to mark this one? I think they're going to give him the first down. He's got it. Forward momentum had it. Great off-balance throw from Reddick to Swigert. Got to got to keep keep this tempo up. Maven with the tackle, and they spike it to kill the clock with 36 seconds left. Number three, Ifani Moma has been the go-to guy for BC, but he is trapped on the sidelines there. His and in this quarterback is a first career 300-yard game, but he's going to need more to yeah, get the win. In this situation, they've got to take some deeper shots, and you're going to have defenders sitting back, but if you've got a 6'6 receiver, get him on the field. Reddick. Complete out of bounds to Larmon. Chains move, clock stops at 29 seconds. Obviously, MoMA has some issue where he's not in the game. Now they give him the call. But a great read, great patience by Chase Reddick, letting the receiver come all the way across the field. And most importantly, Colin Larmon gets out of bounds, stops the clock. See MoMA's numbers today. Splits out wide to the left. First and ten. Mama, top of your screen. Get a safety help for him. 
And MoMA just dropped to the turf. And in and out of the hands of Kimball. MoMA is really struggling. MoMA, not only do they have safety help over the top, but the corner gets in his face, jams him all the way to the ground. Can't recover. Chase Reddick tried to take a quick option over the football and use some of the middle of the field. Might have been a beneficial drop by Kimball had he caught that in the middle of the field in no timeouts. That clock would have kept on ticking. Second and 10, 25 seconds to go. Eagles down seven. Reddick down the middle. Complete inside the 22. Swigert. Good call, Danny. Now they need to hustle and spike. Got to kill it. Clock's running down. You got to kill it as quickly as you can. Change will stop. And a Northwestern player down. Which is a huge break for BC because not only do this, does the clock stop, but you can talk about it. You can think about it. You can get Chase Reddick over to the sideline. Talk a little strategy with him. David Arnold, the man down. We take a look at the last reception by Swigert. Swigert with a post route right over the middle of the field. Once he got behind the linebackers, Chase Reddick, Reddick de delivered another strike. Man, when he has been able to set his feet, he has been on the money. Arnold with the tackle, and he's the one who's struggling right now. Not only that, Rob, but the fourth down conversion when he came out on a little rollout made a great off-balance show. Reddick. Reddick now with 351 passing yards, Danny. But no touchdowns. And that is what the Eagles need right now. You see movement in his arm and hands and his legs. So that is a wonderful sign. But the Northwestern medical staff has Arnold surrounded right now. And whenever you see that hand on the top of a helmet by a medical staffer, it's cause for concern, yeah. but a great sign is the fact he's going to be able to get up and walk off the field. They have a wonderful medical staff there at Northwestern. They do not leave anything to chance. Exhibit A, Dan Persa not playing today. And here's, a, here's a situation here for Boston College. If they don't get completions, they probably have three chances for the end zone. They can get a first down, which would stop the clock for them. Oh, but a penalty kills him in this situation. A young, inexperienced offensive line with a bitter flag to swallow there. Well, they're spending their time discussing this one. Ball start, offense, number 69. As the, as the clock was running with less than a minute to play, a 10-second subtraction applied. And this is, this is a clock operator. Please set the clock to four seconds. This is a new rule that... Five-yard penalty. The clock will start on the ready for play. It's a new rule that college football Im implemented this year, copying the NFL. Where if you get a penalty within a minute left in the half, you get a 10-second runoff. Even worse, the clock is going to start as soon as the officials get the ball set. Here's your final play. It has to be a touchdown for BC. Reddick scrambling to his right. About to get hit, and he's thrilled to the turf. Northwestern wins a big one on the road. Vince Brown with the game-sealing strike. Six straight season opening victories for Northwestern. And with a demanding Big Ten schedule ahead of him, this is a huge win for the Wildcats. Redding still down on the turf. 
Chase Reddick got drilled from behind by Vince Brown just trying to buy time get a ball in the end zone give your receivers an opportunity to make the play and as soon as he wound up Vince Brown had him in his sights last play of the game you're just trying to find a way to get it up there and that's 6'5 265 pounds coming down on you on your face on your neck on your shoulder and Reddick had already been kind of limping a little bit on that last drive but you got to give Chase Reddick a lot of credit showing a lot of toughness in this game there's coach Fitzgerald celebrating a big first opening day win for this Northwestern team 35th career win for Pat Fitzgerald in his sixth year going on the road to open up the season and Northwestern goes to 1 and 0 your final 24 17 from Alumni Stadium coming up next we'll send you back to the studio for Sports Center U this has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports for our entire ESPN production team and Danny Cannell I'm Rob Stone so long from Chestnut Hill now we kick it over to the studio all right, thank you, Rob. Coming up here on ESPNU, Florida State, and E.J. Manuel getting ready for Louisiana Monroe. Manuel making his first opening day start, but he has played quite a bit, was MVP of the Gator Bowl just two years ago. Great finish in the Plains. Game still not over. Utah State and Auburn. Gene Chizik, he'd have that look on his face for much of the afternoon on fourth and goal. Utah State going for it. Chucky Keaton getting in. Utah State led going into halftime. Gene Chizik yelling at his players, running off the field. Third quarter, Auburn with the ball. Barrett Trotter, Travante Stallworth, 39-yard touchdown pass. Auburn with its first lead of the game, 28-24. Matt, give Utah State some uh, credit. They came back. Keaton again, 31-28 Aggies. You could tell that Utah State felt like they could win this game, taking shots near the end zone punching it in when they needed to to take leads over the defending national champions. That touchdown set up by a fake field goal on fourth down. So Auburn down 10, final two minutes. Barrett Trotter, Philip Lutzen, Kirkin. It's a three-point game. Onside kick. Emery Blake comes down with it. Not only does he come down with it, he gets it all the way to about the 22-yard line. So Auburn now in prime scoring position. And Ontario McCaleb gets loose. First and goal now inside the five. And Michael Dyer, BCS Championship game MVP, punches it in. Auburn holds on. The game just went final moments ago, 42 to 38. Wow. When you look at Barrett Trotter in this ball game, though, he actually played pretty well. There's a lot of big plays in this game. Defensively, you are really concerned if you're an Auburn Tiger fan. The defending champs survive week one at home against the Aggies of Utah State. Meanwhile, Ohio State taking on Akron, the start of the Luke Fickle era in Columbus. Interim head coach fired up for the game. Second quarter, Ohio State up 14-0. Watch Ohio State's Andrew Sweat. Concentration. Get your feet down. This kid could be playing receiver. Look at the hands. Looks at that. Two feet down in regulation. Only need one college ball. Joe Bowserman named the starting quarterback. Three touchdown passes to Jake Stoneburner. Those two seem to have some chemistry. They do. They hooked up quite a bit. And you look at Bowserman. I thought he, he looked really good in this opener. And it may just be for temporary time. He hits again for a touchdown. I don't know how long he'll be the starting quarterback because Braxton Miller got some meaningful snaps in this game as well. Bowserman, 12 of 16, 163 yards, three touchdowns. Braxton Miller, 8 of 12, a buck 30. He also threw a touchdown pass. Not bad by the true freshman. 42 points for Ohio State blanking the Zips. You know, and they were missing a lot of key starters. We talk about Terrell Pryor, but obviously Mike Adams, Boom yeah. Heron, 
Posey's out as well, but it was business as usual in the horseshoe, and they still got a couple more warm-up games to go, and they got Miami in the week three. Before we go, quick thought on Auburn. What do you take away from week one? Yeah, they've got to do something about this defense. I like what Trotter did, and I think they're going to get going on the ground, but this defense is going to have to tighten things up. they got Mississippi State next week. All right, we'll have you back here at halftime. Time to send it out to Doak Campbell Stadium, Florida State, Louisiana Monroe. About to get on the way. Welcome to the All-State Game of the Week on ESPNU. It is opening day in Tallahassee, Florida. Florida State number six in the AP preseason poll. Their highest preseason ranking since 2004. And they are ready to go in front of a loud home crowd. Welcome to the All-State Game of the Week. Today, Florida State gets ready to take on Louisiana Monroe, one of the favorites to win the Sun Belt Conference title. Florida State led by second-year head coach Jimbo Fisher, their former offensive coordinator, who had the best first season of any head coach in the history of Florida State with his 10 wins, and now the expectations are quite high here in season number two. This is the ACC on ESPN. One of the great traditions in college football, Chief Osceola on top of Renegade. The spear is in the ground. That means football season is underway at Tallahassee. And we welcome you to Doak Campbell Stadium. Pam Ward along with Dan Hawkins, a former Colorado and Boise State coach. Boy, what an atmosphere this Ooh. is. I'm fired up, almost knocked you out of the booth. That is big time right there. That's <laughs> the, college football. And the fans are fired up too, Hawk, because there's a lot of buzz in this town. They're not just thinking ACC championship in Tallahassee. They're talking about a national championship. Well, Jimbo got out of the gates fast and had a great year last year, capped off by a great bowl win against South Carolina. They return a tremendous defense with a lot of depth, great special teams. E.J. Manuel, that's the key. He is a quarterback now, no longer behind Christian Ponder. He has played in and won a lot of games. He has. He's been an MVP in the Gator Bowl as a freshman. Last year, winning the bowl game against South Carolina in the Chick-fil-A. Had a lot of snaps. Obviously, great pedigree. Good, big-licking, smart guy. Talented. He's poised to do it all. A terrific two-way player, a threat to run as well as throw the ball. He is 6'5", 245, and there you see he is 4-2 as a starter. And as Coach Hawkins mentioned, he had to come in quite often during Christian Ponder's career when Ponder got hurt, played the second half of the Chick-fil-A Bowl, and won a 26-17 game against South Carolina. Here at Doak Campbell Stadium, Bobby Bowden Field at Doak Campbell Stadium. Seats over 82,000. We're expecting a little less than capacity today. Florida State won the toss and deferred, and Louisiana Monroe has decided to receive. That is Tyrus Edwards, a very dangerous running back for the Warhawks. Luther Ambrose, who has terrific speed, well, neither one has a chance to bring it back because Dustin Hopkins is a terrific kicker. 48 of his kickoffs last year were touchbacks, and his first one this year, a Tre touchback. Tremendous hang time on his kickoffs. Anytime you start from the 20 and have to drive, it is a not easy to do. Uh, Louisiana Monroe comes into this game no stranger to big games. They've, they've played Arkansas. They've played LSU. They've played big-time opponents before. I don't think they're going to be scared here today. Colton Browning is their starting quarterback as a sophomore. He was their starter last year as a freshman, beating out a senior incumbent. The lefty completes his first pass to Jairus Edwards. He is tackled down by Vince Williams after a five-yard gain. Great play there to come out, neutralize, a little screen pass. You're going to see a lot of dink and dunk uh, by ULM today. I don't think they're going to hold it in the pocket, get the ball out, because that front of Florida State is, is ferocious. They had 48 sacks last year at Florida State, tied for first in the nation along with Boise State. And the swarming defense does just that. That's a two-yard loss for the quarterback. 
trying to get a little running game. Colton will run it with a little bit. I don't think you want to run it a lot against these Seminoles because you might have to get your backup quarterback ready, but certainly they've got to try to get an extra blocker and with your quarterback in the game, that's a way to do it. And you see Louisiana Monroe, or ULM as they like to be called, getting up to the line rather quickly, third and seven. Browning out of the gun, their preferred formation. He's flushed and has to throw it away. Luther Ambrose, his very speedy receiver, was in the general vicinity, but Browning got rid of it with trouble closing in. Great pressure by Everett Dawkins. The benefit Florida State has is you win games up front, and on defense, they've got about eight, nine guys they can roll in there, so they're going to stay fresh and hungry the entire game. They have 10 scholarship defensive tackles alone, does Florida State. So a three and out, Aaron Munoz in to punt. He's a former backup quarterback. They like to get funky on special teams in the right situation. I would look for something in a fake variety. Here. He punts it away. Greg Reed calls for the fair catch. Florida State will have very good field position after only a 29-yard punt by Munoz. They are going to start from a 47-yard line. Greg Reed, one of the most talented players uh, on this team, but they don't usually kick the ball to him much. They're going to put, an, uh, put it out of bounds or get plenty of hang time on it. So E.J. Manuel, his first opening day start, seventh career start overall. He was 4-2 in his first couple of years. As he backed up Christian Ponder, who is now a Minnesota Viking. One of the questions early on will be to see ULM is very funky on defense. They're a 3-3-5, but they'll bring a lot of pressure, a lot of different looks, and get after this old line for Florida State, and they'll give some protection problems to, uh, to the Seminoles today. Well, Emmanuel had time to throw. Rodney Smith had some room, but the throw was off target. It's interesting, no matter how many snaps you take in practice, you get to that first game, the blood's pumping a little bit harder, and even though you've got a simple route out there, Sometimes you're just not operating at the same level uh, that you do in practice. Understandable with the opening day jitters. Manual, though, has been...